going to see, and that's going to be something that Boston College is going to have to contend with all afternoon. It's going to be very, very difficult. Coming out of the backfield with the tailbacks and the fullbacks, who not only can run but catch the ball a lot, but on the flanks and the wide receivers, Tennessee probably has more speed than BC has seen all year. We talked with free safety Ed Duran about what the problems are guarding, guarding these Tennessee wide receivers and if they plan to change anything. It's a, you know, it's a great challenge, but we're not going to do anything different. You know, coach sat down and he said, you know, we're just going to do basically what, you know, we've been doing all year. Just because they have like two or three receivers that have great speed, you don't change your game plan. You know, you basically do what you're doing. But, you know, we're obviously going to be more aware of the pass because they are pretty much a passing team. And, of course, Boston College has a very veteran secondary. We shouldn't sell them short either. They shouldn't be sold short. Coming into this season, they felt they were the best they've had in recent years because they had lots of speed back there. But they haven't really materialized, and I think we're going to see today a different look. Not only will they play deep and cover the zones as they like to do, but they're going to have to change it up once in a while against this Tennessee offense. Both teams have a lot of offense. We look for a great game here today at Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. We're going to kick it off in just a few moments, so stay with us as the University of Tennessee takes on Boston College. Kickoff after this from your local station. Snake River, Wyoming, and old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. The Snake River means fly fishing for lunker cutthroat trout, and old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp, old Milwaukee beer, and smooth, golden old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place, an old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and old Milwaukee light. Fellas, it just doesn't get any better than this. People in this country work hard every day. Not for fame or fortune do they strive. But the fruits of their labor are worth more than their pay. And it's time a few of them were recognized. You work hard for every dollar you spend. Now get five bucks back when you buy 12 quarts of any Valvoline motor oil. You work a 40-hour week for a living just to send it on down the line. American Video Systems wants you to know that satellite TV ain't what it used to be. If you're out of cable TV range, building a new home, or would just like to improve your current system, then check out the new easy-to-use satellite systems at American Video, featuring a compact all-in-one receiver with a built-in descrambler and a low-profile antenna, over 100 channels at your fingertips, and you own it. It's simple, it's fun, it's legal, and best of all, it's affordable. Call American Video Systems now at 794-8502. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. It's Tennessee and Boston College. This is the eighth game of the series that dates back to 1941. And, of course, Tennessee leads the series six games to one. The last meeting between these two took place in 1979, and it was won by Tennessee 28 to 16. Look at a beautiful day, and you're looking at Brian Lowe, who after a while of not uh, handling kickoffs, is going to be doing the kicking off for Boston College. And deep to receive for Tennessee, you see number five, Thomas Woods from Gallatin, Tennessee, and Andre Kramer is going to be one of the upbacks. Woods is the man who was number one in punt returns in the SEC a year ago. 32,005 and plus on hand to see this one, and we're underway. This is Woods, seven yards deep in the end zone, and he will not run it out as low, kicking with the wind at his back, gets a nice one down into the end zone. We asked Johnny Majors what it's going to take this afternoon to beat this fine Boston College team. For us to win the ball game, I think we're going to do a very good job of not making mistakes on offense and being able to do a good, good job of running the ball adequately. And our defense will have to, to, to come up with some pressure on the quarterback power because he's quick, he has a very good arm, a sharp arm, he's accurate with it. We'll have to have some uh, pressure on him to win the ball game and, and play a very, very good kicking game. First play from scrimmage. And a pass by Randy Sanders is picked off by Garrick McPherson. And all of a sudden, a BC defense picks up a life down to the 32-yard line. Here we pick it up as the quarterback on the corner. Sanders looking to roll, and he's looking to throw upfield. And there comes McPherson. High, elevates himself on the corner, number 48, the senior. We have a flag out around the 41-yard line. Let's see what it's going to be. Got an illegal block below the waist during the run back. 
An illegal block, as you heard, so the interception will stand. Have an illegal block during the run back of the interception, 15 yards. That's Jim Harper, the referee. We're working with a split crew here this afternoon. Harper working with Jim Owens, and Ray Moon is the head linesman. The line judges, bro Joe Brimeyer. Wilson Stanton is the SEC official as the umpire. The receiver really never looks back to get the ball from Sanders here. Number seven as he goes down the field, Anthony Miller. The ball was thrown very soon and a big break for BC early. Austin Cottage after the penalty backed up to their 43, but they've got the football, something they didn't plan on having early. Here is Mike Power back to throw. Power steps up, fires long, walks three. Overthrew him. Covering on the play, Victor Peppers out of Albany, New York. But Flutie was behind him. Ball slightly overthrown by Power. It's been a tough week for Mike Power. It's been a tough week for Mike Power, but there's the difference right there. Number 24, Flutie's been injured. He's had problems with his hands, as we know, uh, and he's been in a cast the last couple of three weeks. And Power gets plenty of protection here. This is very important for him, and he stays in the pocket, something he's been pushed out of in recent weeks. Mike Power brings him out. He's got Jim Bell in the backfield. Along with John Bronner, here comes Bell. First carry in two games. Goes straight ahead up over the 50-yard line, and he's brought down at about the 49. Darren Miller was one to stop him out of Flemington, New Jersey. But there you see Jim Bell. And let's take a look at that Boston College offense as they come out. Mike Power at quarterback. Jim Bell is back. Jim Turner, the fullback, and a cast of great receivers. Flutie and Waddle, they're good ones. Up front, of course, the key is uh, Jeff Oliver, the big left tackle, the best offensive lineman, and the Waddell brothers at right guard and right tackle, and they're big. And Brian Shanley is back in place of Bill Scavone at center this week. In motion, third and two. Here comes a handoff. Bell, and he's got the first down. Moving into the Tennessee secondary to the 42-yard line. Something the Tennessee coaches were concerned about coming into the ball game. They were mighty impressed by the interior of the BC line, their size and strength and their blocking ability. And look at the right side, just ward them off and give Bell a chance to cut back. They are concerned about the size, particularly inside for BC. Seven-yard gain, first and ten. As you look at Mike Power, the tackle by Kelly Ziegler and Andre Kramer. First and ten, Boston College, waddled in motion. And off deep to Bell, he's hit right at the point of attack, but searches ahead over the 40 down to the 38. Miller put a shot at him at the 43-yard line, but could not finish the job. However, he does gain about two yards, making the tackle Kelly Ziegler. Let's take a look at the defensive line here for Tennessee. Mark Poldanek, back from injuries, is back in there. The nose man is Brian Hunt. Marion Hobby, an excellent tackle. We show you a 3-4 concept, but basically, Bob, they're a 50 defense. That's right. They bring those outside linebackers up to play as defensive ends, get a, a 50 look up front when they have to. Second and eight, Boston College. In motion, that's Giles. Back to throw, and power on the flag is thrown. Power to run. At the 35, it gets down at the 32. He's shy of the first down, but let's wait and see what the call is at the near sideline. The call came early, came from the flank, probably going to go against B.C., Keep DeLong on the tackle as we await the call by the official. Jim Harper. Got a little story about Harper in a moment. Illegal motion, set back, man in motion was not set for one second. So it's illegal motion against Boston College. Jim Harper, the last time he worked a Boston College game, was that game at Sullivan Stadium against Alabama in a rainstorm when the power went out. So he's got some fond memories of coming to New England, England and playing this game, playing a role in this game. And that was, I believe, earlier in the year than this game. And today we're blessed with beautiful weather here. Second penalty against Boston College. They've had a problem in that category this season. Massive shifts and three wide outs at the line of scrimmage on second and 13. Power play fake. Rush hard and set down. Making the stop is going to be Kelly Ziegler. And that's his first sack of the season. And you're going to see them come after him. they got a single back, four receivers, two each side, and they put pressure right away. Ziegler comes up the gut. They didn't protect for him, and he got clean shot at power. And this is something Tennessee wishes to do. They want to put pressure on power. People have done it successfully this season. Been sacked 46 times, Bob. That's the 74th tackle of the season for Ziegler. He's a leading tackler for Tennessee, and that's significant. 38 sacks on the year, a third and 23. And that's significant when you take uh, consideration that he missed one game against California. He's very active. He's got great size at 6'1", 220, and he's just an outstanding football player. This situation is an offensive coordinator's nightmare on third and 23. 
Boston College trying to make something out of an interception. They picked up on the first play from scrimmage. Rolling out power, looking long for Flutie. Triple covered. He overthrew. There was a mix-up that time. Power was looking for Flutie to go deep. Of course, Tennessee had too deep coverage. They were really well fortified in the secondary. Never let Flutie get behind them. Power just threw it away. Nelson covering on the play. He was the deepest back there. Tony Nelson is nursing some injuries. So David Rooney comes in. Rooney and Andre Kramer is going to be back. Andre Kramer actually is going to be back to return the punt. 15 returns this season for a 7-3 average. And Rooney on the year is kicking for a 37-5 average. 46 punts. That's a lot. Big rush on, but he gets it away. Kramer with a fair catch at the 15. So that's where Tennessee will take over. Actually, their second offensive series, their first was only one play long. No score with 11.50 left to go in the first half of play in the first quarter. Back right after this. Coach Lyman, he's back. He can't be back. He's sick in the hospital. Yeah, they said he might never come back. All right, lunkheads, laps in 30 seconds. Today, more people survive cancer of the colon, thanks in part to a test that provides early detection. And Eckerd pharmacists have given out over a million of these tests free. Mr. Connolly, what's so funny? I'm just glad to have you back, Coach. To an Eckerd pharmacist, nothing's more important than your health. Imagine a vehicle with a rare combination of talents. A driver-oriented cockpit, electronically fuel-injected power, a rear-wheel anti-lock brake system, and responsive ride and handling. Now imagine all this, not in a car, but in a pickup. The big new full-size 1988 Sierra pickup from GMC Truck. But beware, once you see how much a GMC truck offers, you'll find that one just won't be enough. GMC truck, it's not just a truck anymore. Auto Shack is all over the country and right here in town. And the reason for Auto Shack's phenomenal growth, well, it could be the phenomenal savings of up to 50%, or because Auto Shack has major brands, all the parts you need when you need them. It'd be nine Sundays, over 42,000 guaranteed as long as you own your car. Or, or, or maybe it's the Auto Shack batteries, express parts, free service testing. Or uh, maybe it's the friendly, friendly people that I meet there. Or maybe it's because people don't have time to waste money. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Tennessee comes out with the ball. Actually, their second possession. Randy Sanders brings him out over center at his own 15-yard line. That is Cobb and Wilson in the backfield. Getting the ball is going to be Wilson. Charles Wilson, the fullback. He moves up over the 24-yard line to the 26 and picks up some nice running run. Tennessee shifts into a pro set right here, puts the tailback up on the right side. Wilson stays home at the fullback position. They just slip him the ball behind the tailback's block, as you see here. And he runs back inside over his right guard, John Bruin, who's an outstanding football player, gets good yardage. It's close enough to measure for the first down. Be about nine yards on the carry. And it looks like it's going to be enough. It's a first down for Tennessee, so they get things going. Let's take a look at Tennessee's offense now. Didn't have an opportunity for the first time they had the ball. Sanders at quarterback in for Jeff Francis. Reggie Cobb and Charles Wilson, your running backs. There's the line. Two great guards, Bruin and Galbraith. And off now to Cobb, straight ahead. Not much, up to about the 26-yard line. That's Wilson again. And that's Bill Thompson on the tackle. Boston College defensively looks like this. Boston College defensively has to get a lot of play out of their tackles and their nose guard, Dave Nugent, who we might find a defensive tackle today to give him a little added strength. But that's the important part of it. And, of course, two great linebackers, Romanowski, the All-American nominee, and Galvin, the guy with great speed. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain by Wilson. And off this time, Cobb, first time he's touched the ball this afternoon. He gets up over the 30-yard line. Romanowski catches him in a shoestring tackle. But again, he falls ahead to the 33. Cobb is quite a talent. He's quite a talent, and they're coming to their running backs now to get their quarterback, Randy Sanders, into the ball game. Give him a chance to get a feel for it. They're running their two good backs, both Cobb and Wilson, and they can run both off tackle, inside and outside. Third and about four coming up after the, actually third and three, after a seven-yard game by Cobb. There's Cobb again. Cobb straight ahead. Duran stacks him up. 
He gets close to a first down. Looks like he's going to be a yard shot. In on the tackle, Paul Mayer in at the nose guard. It's not close enough for the first down. They'll be forced to punt. That time they moved Mayer, number 62, in at nose guard. Put Nugent, the normal nose guard, at tackle. And there's the play. Right there is the hit by Mayer. He got enough of him and early enough to keep him from getting to the sticks. And it's fourth down for Tennessee. I want to see a punter. Watch Bob Garman. Look at those yards. 42 a kick. Back deep. It's going to be Waddle. Takes a Tennessee roll. Rolls inside the 20. So that's where you want it, although it didn't look like it was going to go that far in the air, and it's going to go inside the 15-yard line. And Tennessee waiting for it to die, and it rolls right there. Good defensive position. 9.41 left to go in the first period of play. No score. We'll be back after this from your local station. Sign here, man. But this is more than what your sign says. For well, sure, you're using your credit card instead of cash. Excuse me. If your service station charges a higher price for credit cards than cash, take your business elsewhere. Take your business to Gulf, the people who don't charge you more for credit cards. Come again. Gulf, one low price, cash or credit. Welcome back to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, near Boston. Alumni Stadium the location as you look in on the offensive huddle. Tennessee and Boston College. No score early on. BC at their own 14-yard line. Nice power brings it up. And back in motion is Cherry. The pitch is to Bell to the top side. Bell looking for the sideline. And has it shown to him out there along the far sideline for very little game. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of Boston College, the Southeastern Conference, is prohibited. As we take a look in the Boston College huddle, as Jim Bell's performance thus far this season, they missed him for two games. That's through six, actually. Second down and four after the four-yard gain on the play. Here comes the pitch, but wait a minute. A flag thrown in the Boston College backfield. There was a real miscommunication between the quarterback power and the rest of the line. He looked like his, the snap was made before. The line jumped off, and this is going to go against B.C. Several mistakes here early yeah, for them. They had field off. position. Illegal movement in the offensive line of scrimmage. As we look at it from uh, this level, you see the right guard and the right tackle. That's both brothers. That's D Doug Wydell, the right guard, and his brother David, the senior. Both oh. moved before the snap. So Casparello got an early start. Three penalties, 25 yards. Boston College second at nine, back to their own 14. Here is Bell, handoff right up the middle, and not much working in the middle. And he ran into the big nose man, Charles McCray, right up the gut. Ray Cooper also went on the stop. And watch Richard the Cooper. play here as you see number 70 come down off the block of 66. That's Ake in the right guard. And there's the play in the middle. Good job by the Tennessee interior. And three people in on a tackle, and they stop him for a little game. Cooper gets primary credit for the tackle. 19 tackles on the season out of Memphis. Third and eight. No score. Boston College and Tennessee. BC at their own 15-yard line. Flutie in motion. Power rolling right to throw. Watch Flutie completed the 26. It's down to the 28-yard line and a flag thrown into boot. Kramer in late. Days on the tackle. So Boston College will get a nice gain on the play and a penalty to boot. And here comes Flutie back from the wide side, and he curls back to the football in the middle. He gets in between the linebacker coming inside out and the cornerback. And watch for number one coming late. And they called him for it. Here's Flutie coming in motion. Watch him come down and finds the seam. Turns back into it right there. Ties up with it. Good job. Good timing pattern. Good protection for Mike Power. And there's the hit by number one, Andre Kramer, the strong safety, coming up a little bit late. And there's Darren Flutie, the senior at a Natick High School, the brother, of course, of the famous quarterback, Doug Flutie. 13-yard gain plus 15 on the penalty. 
Here's the pitch to Bell. Bell at the 45. And he's ridden out of bounds. They say he stepped out a little early at the 46-yard line. Ridden out of there. Looked like by Marion Hobby. Boston College put their formation to the field now, and they're running Bell from the eye format, tailback position back into the sideline, into the boundary, the short side of the field where they've got an extra blocker in their tight end. That's the second time they've run it for good yardage. They may come back to that play in the crucial situation. Lost the last two games to West Virginia and Rutgers without him as a part of it. And so far, he's carried six times for 28 yards this afternoon. Second and six. Back to throw power. Power scrambling. And after run, he's got the first down and more. And now he's headed for the sideline wisely at the 36. We know that Mike Power can run. That time, he was looking deep to go again. The Flutie and Waddle, who were working their way up the field, but they get out of contain. On the right, left side of our screen, you'll see the contain man, Miller, lets him outside of him and gives him a chance to get on the corner, and he'll run when he can do it. Of course, he's doing it today knowing that his backup quarterback is hurting also, and that's Mark Camphouse. Camphouse suffered bruised ribs against West Virginia late in that game. His availability very limited today. Here's Power, first and ten. Runner to block. Goes to the corner. It is complete to Marcus Cherry at the 32-yard line. Not much of a gain on the play. Maybe about four yards. And Terry McDaniel comes up to make the stop. And, of course, he was again looking upfield this time for uh, Tom Waddle, the flanker. When Waddle was covered deep along with Flutie, he came to the outlet. That was Cherry coming from inside out for the short pattern. Picked up about four yards. Flutie goes out. It'll be second down and six. As we see Ray Hilbert come to the bottom of your screen. Casparello comes in motion also to the bottom. To the short side of the field. Pitch goes to Bell. Bell at the 30. He's open. And we're about the 21-yard line. Ridden out of bounds by Kelly Days. Boston College does a great job of motion and moving people. Watch the, the tight end came across the formation, lined up on the right side, and again, they get the ball to Bell into the boundary with the extra block of Bronner, and, and Tennessee has not made an adjustment to that, and they're picking up good yardage, staying into the sideline, away from the field. Bell, seven carries, 37 yards this afternoon. Already has an impact on this game as Boston College starting this drive at their own 14. They're at the Tennessee 22. Cherry in motion. Here is Bronner, the fullback. Straight ahead. Inside the 20 down to about the 13. Pick anybody along that front line. is Mike Kelly, Marion Hobby, and Charles McRae on the stop. I think the, uh, the coming back of Jim Bell into this offense means a lot to them. They really didn't have consistency in the running game. And for BC to move the ball and to score, they've got to have somebody at tailback to keep you honest. So I think he balances it off and gives Mike Power, their quarterback, a chance to operate both as a runner himself, but more importantly as a passer. They have that tailback back, that big back who can run that ball outside and inside. Second down and six. Power gives to Bell again. Bell runs into a host of people right up the middle. And he is stopped primarily by Keith DeLong out of Lawrence, Kansas. A great story, Keith DeLong, and a great football player. He's the, he's the son of uh, Steve DeLong, who was an All-America at Tennessee. And watch him look at a cutback and look at him fill that hole. He just can't do it any better than Keith DeLong, the junior. At 6'2", 212 pounds. Good size at that linebacking core with DeLong and Ziegler. Mark Ankin took a stab at him but couldn't. Gain of one on the play. Third down and five coming up. No score. Boston College in Tennessee with 6.24 left in the first. Flutie in motion to throw. Power. Lots of time looking for Flutie over the middle. It's incomplete. Late with the football that time. Flutie came open early. Power didn't deliver it to him on time. A little bit late with the ball. The coverage came, and he threw it up and away. Watch it here as we see. They come up with split backs, a passing set, and they're looking for Flutie. He'll appear in the left corner of the screen. He's curling back to the ball, but he threw it a little bit too late. He was open early. This brings on Brian Lowe for a 34-yard field goal attempt. His longest this season is 44. He is so far on the year 7 out of 8 in the field goal department. Sean Carmody is going to be doing the holding. Number 13. There's the snap and the kick by Lowe. And it is good. No, and it's no good. Looked like it crawled inside the crossbar, but they say it is no good. And Boston College, with a nice drive all the way down from their own 14-yard line, does not score. 
Ryan Lowe thinks it was good also. He went over and talked to that official. So Tennessee takes the ball back over, and they get it at their own 20-yard line. No score in the first quarter of play with 6-11 left. Uh, bartender? Yeah. Uh, give me a light. A light? Yeah. Why, sure. Oh, I, I've got it. No, <laughs> oh, no, a Bud Light. If you want the great taste of Bud Light, ask for it. Uh, bartender? Yes? Uh, give me a, oh, let's see, uh, uh, give me a Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. Nice call. Thanks. There are those who fervently believe that true perfection is found in the details. At the Bavarian Motor Works, we gave that belief a name. We call it the BMW 735i. Beautiful, to be sure. Yet perhaps the most beautiful thing about it is its spirit. Go try by Brian Lowe as we see this ball. Number six kicks it for BC, and it's staying to the right. And as we follow it up over the top, it apparently went right over the top of that right upright, and so it is no good. In motion, that's Cleveland. Here is Cobb. Cobb chased by Nugent and tracked down after only a one-yard gain. There's Dave Nugent making the tackle for Boston College. Nugent comes from the nose guard position right down, and he flattens out, which every defensive lineman has to do. And he takes the shortest cut to the ball, carries. He turns up field. Big play by the BC defense. And if the game is going to be won today, it's guys like Nugent, the senior out of Reading, Massachusetts, and others that have to make the plays. The defense of BC has not been consistent in recent weeks. Second down and nine. Here's Sanders to throw into the flat. And looking for Anthony Miller, the speedster out there, who had some protection, but it was thrown into the ground. And that's Incomplete. just a quick screen pass to the wideout. And he really, this, this thing has great potential. He's got two blockers in front of him, but he just throws a knuckleball to him. Bad pass by the quarterback, that's all. Leach just hung up on his hand. Miller comes to the sideline now. Middlebrooks is back in, so they go from that three wide receiver set to using a tight end here, needing a first down. No score, Tennessee and Boston College, 5.33 left first third. Sanders to throw. Looking upfield, he wants to set Intercepted by Galvin. Galvin at the 28, down to the 27 yard line. Bruin brings him down, and Galvin picks off his first pass of the year. The Volunteers like to come. Tennessee likes to come to their backs out of the backfield, and he's looking for him right here as he comes out. He was looking for William Howard, the fullback. He just threw it a little bit tough and high, and as it bounced off, Galvin, who's got great speed, he's got 4-7 speed at linebacker, makes the play. But here it is. He's just dropping that ball off to him. If he catches it, he's got good field in front of him. Big break for Boston College. They've got several so far in the first period, but they better take advantage of it soon. They are sitting at the Tennessee 26-yard line. Running his bell. Gets his way to the 25. Not much more than that at the 24-yard line. Coming in, for the uh, coming in for the tackle. Victor Peppers in Tennessee already owns the turnover department with two so far. That time they ran back again into the boundary, but the cornerback came up. Peppers right away and diagnosed the play and kept it to a short gain, and that's what they got to do. They've got to be able to get the cornerback up and force the tailback bell to either cut it back inside where the pursuit is coming from. Second down and eight. Carry a split to the bottom side. Waddle up top. Waddle the leading receiver. Here comes Bell there, straight ahead. And he moves down to close to the 20-yard line. Boston College is thinking they're in the four-down zone here. They can go in and on fourth down. Just running up behind his fullback here is Jim Bell, the senior from Madison, Connecticut, number 33. And he carries six feet, one, 202 pounds, and he's a good runner. He can run it both inside and outside, and he could be the difference for the Boston College Eagles today. Kelly Ziegler from Miami in on the stop for Tennessee. It's third and four. This is sort of ball game with 4.17 left to go. First period. Gasparillo set up in a passing situation. Here's power to throw. Wants Gasparillo over the middle, and it's incomplete. Protecting on the play, Tony Nelson for Tennessee. 
BC has doesn't not, go to that tight end a lot. I was just going to say that. They do not go to Casparello as much as they have in the past in past seasons here. And again, this is a poorly thrown pass. It's a tough pass because it was good coverage that time by DeLong, who was in front of the tight end, but he just didn't throw a good spiral. Here comes Brian Lowe again. This kick is going to be deeper. It's going to be a 37-yard field goal attempt. He missed his first one from 34. Sean Carmody to hold as we set the line of scrimmage now at the 20-yard line. Boston College needing to get something out of two interceptions a good, and a good drive. There's the kick by Lowe. It is up, and it is good. Lowe puts Boston College on top. They take advantage of the second pass interception, and they move out in front by a score of 3 to nothing with 4.02 left to go on the first period of play. We'll be back after this word from your local station. The heartbeat of Memphis leader Chevrolet introduces the 88 Chevrolet celebrity a blend of function, fun, and value. Leader Chevrolet has a large selection of celebrities with colors, styles, and equipment that you prefer. The 88 celebrity, unexpected value at an affordable Leader Chevrolet price. At Leader Chevrolet, Airways at Winchester, where it's a pleasure to do business. Kicked a 37-yard field goal to put Boston College on the board. Here's an early score at Notre Dame. Fighting Irish leading Navy in the contest by a touchdown. Lowe's field goal came three plays after John Galvin picked off a Randy Sanders pass. We should note here that Boston College won the toss and elected to kick off. They took the wind and elected to kick off. That's a very interesting choice in the part of, uh, of Jack Bicknell. What happens now is they've got to stay in and take advantage of that in this first period with four minutes left. They did it with one field goal, but they'll only have the win for four more minutes. Here comes Lowe with a kick. Back deep is Woods, and he's driven out of the end zone with a kick, and that's the effect of the win right there. Of course, Boston College got a free series with the interception on the very first play, and now we look out into the Tennessee huddle and see if we're going to see a new quarterback, and yes, we are. We're going to see Sterling Hinton out of Passaic, New Jersey. Hinton comes into the picture, number 16, 5 for 7 on the season, 117 yards, 71% pass completion, but his forte is running the football. That's right. We can look at him as a runner at Passaic High School. Produced one other great football player today. Greg Hayward we're talking about from Pitt. Here's the handoff to the fullback, and a fumble picked up by Steve Williams. He gets into the end zone, but I believe it's going to be blown dead. It's blown dead. The question is, was the ball dead? They're marking it at the 17-yard line. Boston College thinks they've got their third turnover. And they do. Steve Williams picking up the fumble. Tremendous amount of breaks in this first period for Boston College. Just the handoff deep in the backfield of Reggie Cobb. He's trying to cut it back. He's hit by Romanowski, and the ball comes bouncing out. And there's number two, Steve Williams, the senior from Providence, Rhode Island, who got the fumble, and BC again has great field position. Two pass interceptions and a fumble, and more great field position for Boston College. That's a Tennessee 18. And off straight ahead to Bronner. Not much running room. Coming in on the stop is going to be Kelly Ziegler, also Charles McCray, the freshman from Clinton, Tennessee. In on the stop for the volunteer defense who's been out there an awful long time in this And that's a third. very important factor. BC is a big physical team up front as they've been running the ball fairly effectively. They've got great field position here. Second and eight for Mike Carr. Usually they used to, they throw the ball, but here they've got the ball in the second down in the four down zone and they run it. And they go to Jim Bell. 
Bell following the block of Doug Widell gets inside the 15 to the 13. He's tackled by Terry McDaniel and there is a flag on the play. The penalty probably it looks like it may go against Tennessee and it may be a late it's hit. It's grabbing of the face mask by the defensive team. Five yard penalty. It's the minor face mask penalty. Let's take a look at it. And the ball deep here to Bell behind his fullback runner and as he breaks in there tough to see any face masks at all but they say there was one Eric Hayworth or Tracy Hayworth on the tackle for Tennessee as Johnny Majors looks on he's seen his defense go up against some pretty tough odds this afternoon they've been defending the four down area most of the day second and one Bell with a carry inside the five pushes his way to about the four yard line Runs into Havanek and also in on the play, Hobby. And Charles McCray gets another call as well. Boston College inside the 10 yard line, coming with two tight ends to give balance to their offense, to be able to run either left or right. They've got in the game Casparella and Kyle Hudgens. They make the first down, and they have four shots at it from the five. If you look at Jim Bell. Bell looks happy to be back in this ball game after sitting out two weeks with a full hamstring in the Army game. And so far, he's rushed 12 times for 49 yards. And there you see the first down statistic in the first half. Timeout for BC on the field. They want to make sure they get the right call here. Jack McNell has decided to take a timeout. 2.34 left to go in the first period of play. Boston College, as Bob pointed out, they declined the option. They wanted to kick so they could have the wind, importantly, here in the first quarter. They want to keep that wind with 2.34 left. And they're down in the four down area at the five yard line, hoping to get their signals straight. It's first and goal at the five. And in the game, they have. Chico, number 41, another tight end back into the football game. So, and they substitute again for him. So they're substituting and shuffling their tight ends in and out of the game. North Carolina leading Maryland. First quarter down in College Park. Notre Dame has Navy by a touchdown at South Bend. That's in the first quarter of play. We'll keep you up to date on all the scores throughout the afternoon as we have them as Mark Power talk to the official Mike Power under a lot of pressure in recent weeks whether he should be the starting quarterback or not and his coach Jack McNell defending him at every turn and you know Power hasn't done that bad a job he can't control whether he gets sacked 38 times here comes a handoff Bell inside the five down to the three Hobby in on the stop he's got him by the belt also, Kelly Ziegler getting off from the pile. Very tough inside. Tennessee from tackle to tackle is a tough football team when you consider that DeLong and Ziegler are backing them up. And when you look at them inside as they try to run right at them using their tailback bell, you can see there's a lot of hitting going on. A good job by Gray breaking his tackle and the fill by Marion Hobby, the sophomore out of Alabama. Second and goal from the three-yard line. Slip backfield. Hislop and Bell are back there for Mike Power. Here is Power to carry. Power fumbles the football. It's picked up by Tennessee. Flag on the play. And Jack Bicknell, very discouraged. They had a great shot at more points, and we've mentioned how many breaks they've gotten. Here it is, first down. Going the other way for Tennessee. They came out in a pro set tail back at home and they tried to run the option the we had holding on the offensive team is declined by the widest first down they tried to run an option back into the sideline you see it here the fake to the fullback here comes power and he makes the right choice he decides to keep it but watch this hit from behind by number 55 for Tennessee and that is Kimbrough and Kimbrough makes the hit and, and watch up. his arm come across there he made the hit there's a key fumble and a big break, and Tennessee gets the ball. DeLong makes the recovery. Keith DeLong makes his first fumble recovery of the year. First and ten from the five. And off straight ahead, and it's going to go to Reggie Cobb. Cobb gets out to about the ten-yard line. As you look at Sterling Henson. Hands the ball deep to his tailback. They just want to keep it together here, get some better field position, make a first down, and finally get their offense going. And off again, Cobb. Cobb busts the tackle. He just hit somebody and went straight ahead to the 15-yard line. You know, there's a story about Cobb. Cobb was uh, attending a game at Knoxville. Of course, there's Johnny Majors. 
Cobb is a native of, Jock, of, of Knoxville and uh, went to see Georgia play Tennessee one time. Was so impressed, of course, with Herschel Walker. From there on in, his number would be number 34. And he runs like Herschel Walker as well. He sure does. He's 5'11", about 205 pounds, and he takes it up inside with authority. Only a freshman. Made four hard yards that time. It's going to be second down and six. Minutes. Last week he had a career high against Georgia Tech of 140 yards with 27 carries. Started the season off with a bang with 126 yards against Iowa in the kickoff classic. This is going to be close enough for a first down they're going to measure. I think it's very interesting that Johnny Majors has come. It's a little bit short with Sterling Hinton here so early in this football game. He's only a freshman. He's 6'2", about 191 pounds. They like him a lot. He's a great athlete, and he can run the option, and he can roll out with the football. So they decided to go with Sterling Hinton. The uh, freshman out of Passaic, New Jersey, at quarterback, right here with 120 left in the first period of this football game. So they're going to decline the penalty, and instead of taking second and two, there was a penalty against Boston College. They'll take third and an inch. Three nothing, Boston College. A minute 15 left to go. Big third down carry. This is Howard. He's got the first down. Howard up over the 20 to the 24-yard line and a flag thrown in as June Anderson and Ed Duran make the stop. It's just power as you see Howard and he almost breaks the line of scrimmage here and that could have been an even bigger game before he's finally brought down by Duran. But Howard out of Lima, Ohio is a good sized fullback at six foot, 239 pounds. He was originally signed by Kentucky. Here's the penalty now. As we see it marked off, it's a major one against Boston College after the play. Looks like it's going to be a personal foul against Boston College. It brings it out to the 37-yard line. Best offensive field position of the day for Tennessee. Here's hit. The throw. Throws incomplete intended for Terrence Cleveland. Let's take a look at the late hit. This is what the penalty is all about. June Anderson gets caught. That time... Hinton was looking to get his uh, one of his favorite receivers, Terrence Cleveland, up into the seam between the strong safety and the safety. He was open. Pass was just a little bit too long. Second down coming up. Oh, we've had a bunch of flags here in the first half. Here's a handoff to Cobb on the counter. Cobb over the 40, out to about the 43-yard line. Picked up by Ed Durant on the tackle. Tennessee really makes a lot out of formations. They don't do much motion, but they do a lot of shifting. They come up with an eye set, a single back, a pro set. That time they were in the pro set. He runs a little draw play here. And number 34, Reggie Cobb, cuts to the opening. He finds the opening, he gets up field, good yardage, and the, turn, the tide has turned a little bit here for Tennessee. They've got much better field position. They got their offense making some first down. Gain of six, third and four. There is Hinton going to the flats. It is incomplete. It tended out there on the flats to Thomas Woods and a big play by Vincent Munn. Munn timed it perfectly. He came up. It was a little stop pass. The receiver's just coming down to get enough yardage for a first down. And the ball was thrown, and Munn took a gamble. And he almost came up with the interception. But more importantly, he forced them to punt. Leads Boston College in interceptions with three. And there is Bob Garman. You know, 53 yarder the first time. It traveled about 25 in the air. The rest on the ground with a nice bounce. Here's the kick. This is a beauty. It hangs for Waddle. At the 21, he fumbled it, but manages to pounce on it to save it for Boston College. So with nine seconds left to go in the first period of play, BC gets the ball with a wind at their back, leading by a score of three to nothing. But if you're looking at Tennessee, you got to feel that you're very fortunate to be only down by three with this, with all that's happened to them. And that's exactly what Johnny Majors is thinking. He's saying, hey, we had a lot of breaks go against us. We've turned the ball over. We've had penalties, and we're only trailing by three. And we're going to get the win, and it is a factor in nine seconds. 39-yard punt. By Garman that time. Here's Power setting up with the win. Goes to the flats to Bell. Bell gets a nice block from Wydell and gets out to the 32-yard line. Gain of about eight on the play. DeLong comes up to make the stop out of his linebacker spot. And that's the end of the first period of play. Boston College with a 37-yard field goal on the board. We'll be back after this word from your local station. The Great American Face. Rugged, distinctive, the Great American Razor. 
Actra. Solid. Pivots for closeness. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Actra. Only from Gillette. Xerox. The antifreeze that beats winter. Available now. Brakes, internationally patented suspension, uncanny control. Conventional luxury sedans are built to survive accidents. The BMW 528e is built to avoid them. Let's see if they're okay. Would you like to get away from something? Away from town, away from your job, away from the chores around the house. We at Davis Campus Sales invite you to come by and see the great getaway vehicles from Winnebago. Our motorhomes come in a size and price to fit any family. We've got what you've been waiting for, the right motorhome at the right price. Isn't it time you owned a Winnebago from Davis Campus Sales, the Mid-South's largest motorhome dealer? Being professional means being the best. At Bosch, our best means number one worldwide in quality and reliability for professional-grade power tools. For ultimate precision and power, the variable speed orbital action jigsaw, the most compact routers ever created with the largest bit selection available, and the circular saw that never lets you get off track. Make it Bosch, a surprising price to pay for the best. Bosch Power Tools can be purchased at Coco Fine Woods and Tools, 2631 Jackson Avenue. Welcome back to Boston College's Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, near Boston. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. Boston College leading Tennessee by a field goal, coming up on second and one at their own 32-yard line. Back to throw, Power. Mike Power looking for Jim Bell. It is incomplete. Let's take a look at the first quarter stats here. While we have a moment, Tennessee and Boston College having at it. Boston College, total yards, they lead there 80 to 40. The passing yards, Tennessee thrown three passes. Two of them have been picked off. That's between two quarterbacks. That's right, but uh, it's early on, and Hinton just came into the game for Tennessee. We may see a change in that figure, but basically it's been Boston College with a lot of opportunities on offense in the first period. We've seen so far three turnovers, four turnovers in 15 minutes of play. That is Kislock. So it brings people with him over the 35-yard line to about the 37. Substituting different backs, different receivers, but Hislop into the game, going for the first down yardage here behind the block of his fullback. And Hislop gets inside and gets enough yardage and keeps the drive alive. Kelly Ziegler coming up with a tackle, leading tackler for Tennessee. Boston College, first and ten at their own 36. Lots of late shifts. Power deep handoff to Bell. Bell straight ahead to about the 38 to 39 yard line. Keep the long making the stop. But Boston College wanting to spread Tennessee all around the field. They want to spread him, but they and they're still trying to run back inside, but it's awfully tough to run inside. Watch the fill of the linebacker here. Watch the long 33 just moves perfectly behind the block, follows the ball carrier, and makes the hit. Get some support. I mean, they're tough to run in from tackle to tackle. Oh, that good down lineman, and they've got excellent linebacker. And that's DeLong and 212 trying to battle off Doug Wydell at 277 pounds, but he did it, made the stop. Here's Power on second and eight. Power has a man complete. It is Darren Flutie. First down over midfield. Big difference today, Steve Martin. The fact that Power is getting protection. He sat in that pocket, and he waited. Look at this protection for Flutie to go down and curl back to the football. This is very well done, but the difference is the line blocking for Mike Power. He's getting time. That's the second pass reception for Darren Flutie today, and he now is second all alone in the BC all-time receiver list at 122. He needs 11 more to surpass Kelvin Martin at Boston College. First and 10, the Eagles. There is Brano, the big fullback. Used to be a nose guard. Bulls his way down to the 43-yard line. Keith DeLong in on the stop. We've called Keith's name a lot. The major's looking on. He wants to get his hands on that football a little bit more. Tenth year at Tennessee, 19 years total coaching. 
since the last season. Excuse me, he's had 10 years, and in those 10 years, seven times they've gone to bowl games. This is his 11th year as head coach, his 19th year total. Stops at Iowa State and Pittsburgh, where he won a national championship. Second down and eight. Two late shifts in the line. Three wide receivers for power. Big rush on Miller. Hunts down Mike Power back at the 47-yard line. Great job that time. They took a chance, and they came with the outside linebackers. And if you look at the sacks by the Tennessee defense, it usually comes from the linebacker, and Miller just came clean. Why? Because they spread them out. They had three wide receivers. They had one back back there. They just didn't have enough protection for him. And that's the senior, Darren Miller, from Flemington, New Jersey. Return to fumble in the kickoff classic, 96 yards for a touchdown earlier this year, this season. It seems like so long ago, August 3rd. Third and 15. E.C. leading Tennessee by a field goal. Here's Power. Make it roll up. Camps out and fires. It's intercepted. Intercepted and picked up down to the 40-yard line. That looks like Victor Pepper. No, it's going to be, I believe, Andre Kramer. Andre Kramer making the pickoff. That's his first interception of the season. This is a bootleg action. This is a naked as he comes out with no blockers. He beats the block of the defensive end who was rushing him. But when he comes up to throw the ball here and he's looking for Casparella, he just threw it into the hands of Kramer, who was in perfect position, had, had the tight end covered as he came across. Big mistake by Mike Power. First one of the day for him. Fifth Actually, turnover of the game. First interception thrown by Power today in his seventh of the season. Here's Hinton the pass. He's got Anthony Miller out in the flats. June Anderson trying to track him down. He's still free. And gets down to the 21-yard line. Driven out of bounds at the 21. First completion of the game for Tennessee, and it's for ninth yardage. And it's the little flip screen. They tried it before, and the quarterback that was in the game that time, Sanders, threw it in the ground. But this time, they get it out there. Look at the blockers they have in front of Miller. This is perfectly executed with that kind of speed. Another member of the Tennessee track team. Anthony Miller from Pasadena, California. He got upfield, got a first down, and Tennessee's got the best field position of the day. How strong is that wind? It just blew the football off the field, off the mark. There's Anthony Miller from Pasadena Junior College. First and 10 at the 20-yard line, a 20-yard game. Deep handoff goes to William Howard. Howard just carries people inside the 20, and we've got a flag and a late hit. Carrying on the play is Keith Davis. That's his first carry of the afternoon. There's a confrontation there between the great offensive guard, Harry Galbraith of Tennessee, and Bill Romanowski, the All-American candidate from uh, B.C. Let's see how it goes. Two All-Americans go at it, and let's see what the call is going to be. Penalty against Tennessee. Here comes the call. We have a dead ball. Personal foul striking by the offensive team. 15 yards. A second down. That was the call. Let's see what happens here late. Now watch the top of the screen. And there's Galbraith pushing Romanowski. You know, this is a physical game. I'm really surprised. <laughs> here we go. I don't know. Better them than me. Tough I break, though. Me. Actually, they took him out how to push that ball back over the 30-yard line. They're looking at a second down and long. And the first time for Sterling Hinton, the uh, freshman quarterback, big decision here. Kennard McGuire out of Memphis is split to the bottom of your screen. Out of the eye formation. Here is Hinton to throw. Nugent applying pressure. It's a screen to Wilson. Wilson ahead. Not much yardage to about the 30-yard line, a gain of two. Excellent job, though, by June Anderson, the defensive end who got up into that screen and forced the, the uh, ball carry to try and turn back. Watch the pressure here. It's well done, though, well executed by Hinton as he puts it out. Watch 37 on the corner. See him come up, and he forces him to try and cut back. He loses a little bit of balance, and by that time, the pursuit got to him. Anderson made the play. Peter Gray also helping out. Anthony Miller split wide to the bottom, third and 22. Boston College 3-0 over Tennessee. 10-40 left, first half. And off straight ahead. Draw play with it, that is Wilson, and gets down inside the 15 to the 10-yard line. Ed Duran has to make a safety stop. Still going to come up on four. And they caught him here. They expected run and they expected pass out of Tennessee. They ran a little option handed to the fullback. And big number 32, Charles Wilson, rumbled inside the 15-yard line. Got 20, 22 yards. He got a first down. Excuse me. Got a fourth down and three. At 19 yards, and it's going to be fourth and three. And this will bring the field goal unit on, it appears. And out to kick is going to be Phil Rich out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. 
11 out of 16 thus far this season, 51 yards. This is a 31-yard, 30-yard field goal by Rick. It's a low squid kick. Good! He didn't clear the crossbar by much, but it got over. And we got a tie ball game. So Tennessee evens the score on a Phil Rich field goal of 30 yards at the 9.51 mark. It's tied at three apiece. Xerox, the antifreeze that beats winter. Available now. The Great American Face, strong, sensitive. The Great American Razor, Actra Plus, solid, with the Lubra Smooth Strip for extra protection. The Great American Face deserves the Great American Shave. Actra Plus, only from Gillette. Delta Airlines flight attendant Irene Lockwoody loves to fly. Are you still here? My son was supposed to meet me. Well, I'll wait with you. That kid is always late. What she loves most are the people she meets. He must have gotten caught in the rain. He was even born late. Uh, Irene is what Delta's all about. Irene. Yes? Are you married? Yep. Two kids. Late again, Joey. We love to fly and it shows. Sports Medicine. One of many programs available at Baptist Hospital's HealthPlex. Doctors, physical therapists, and other specialists work as a team to treat sports-related injuries and chronic pain. Through the use of the latest muscle therapies and non-surgical technologies, sports participants are being returned to their games faster, without pain. Baptist Hospital, a leader in world medicine. Let's take another look at Phil Rich's field goal attempt. Look at this thing, it's twisting on its side. But it's over, and that's all that matters. He slam dunked it. 30 yards away, and Tennessee it's three points either way if it clears across by, by one feet of 30. Here comes the kick, and it's taken by Frazier at the two. Frazier up the middle of the field and not from his feet at the 20-yard line. Let's take a look at the scoring drive now for Tennessee. Four plays, 27 yards, 208 to convert, and Bill Rich with his 12th field goal of the season, a 30-yard line drive. Now again, Mike Power working against the wind, and the wind is a factor right in his face now. He's got plenty of time on the clock. The ball's sitting right on the 20-yard line. They've been doing a lot with their tailback. Jim Bell from the deep back position as they come out in his formation. Wing back to the top side. That's Flutie and Moji across the screen, and here is Bell with a carry. Well, straight ahead to about the 25-yard line. Getting off off the bottom of the pile is going to be Kelly Ziegler. Notre Dame putting it to Navy in the second quarter at South Bend, where we'll be next week. And Vanderbilt leading Rutgers, a great American independent, by a field goal in Nashville. Our score is tied at three apiece. We see in the ball game at fullback John Browner, number 90. He's the big one at 6'4", 237, and he's a good one to have in front of Jim Bell as a blocker. Power looks at second and five. Boston College 25. He's rolling to his right. Tries to get the corner. Has the first down just in time and avoids a tackle by Mike Kelly from Chattanooga. Get out of bounds. He was looking to find his uh, his deep back in that particular case, Marcus Cherry. This is a bootleg action or a counter action. He comes back and he's following the fullback. Bronner's his personal blocker out there, and he just eludes number 77. That's Richard Cooper. Richard Cooper, the defensive tackle. When power got enough. He decided to tuck the ball in and get his first down as he stepped out of bounds. At the 30-yard line of Boston College, Gasparillo sets up tight on the right in motion. Ray Hilbert is the pitch to Bell. Bell with a flag thrown in. The boot gets up over the 30-yard line to the route of 32. Let's see where that flag is thrown. Flag has like got an extra weight on that flag today, Bob. Yeah, it's going to fly away on it, but let's hear it from the referee. Again, they tried to go back into the sideline, but again, Tennessee is defending it much better. Early, they made good yardage on that play. Penalty's going to go against BC. Austin College seems to want to run into the boundary a lot here in the first half. They did initially with great success, but now the cornerback is starting to fill for Tennessee. We have illegal motion, illegal motion on the offensive team, illegal movement in the offensive backfield. Is declined second down. They declined the penalty because they made no gain on it, so therefore they've got a second down and ten. 
By boundary, we mean to the short side of the field. The ball is over on the right hash mark. Second down and nine for Boston College. 8.53 left in the first half of play. Here's a handoff, Bell. Bell jumps into the hole and gets up over the 36-yard line. Carried a few people with him. Finally brought down there by Keith DeLong. Bell has the ability, we've seen enough of him this year, to, that he has the ability to change and stop on a dime and make the cut. And he does that well, and you see him here, he, and he can start up again from a from almost a stop position. He's really a very durable back, a very impressive runner, and as we've seen today, he can also catch the ball coming out of the backfield. He means a lot to have him back today against Tennessee. Tennessee and Boston College tied at three. It's third and three for BC at their own 37-yard line. Bell in a wing to the right, back to throw his power. Power has Waddle complete. Waddle in midfield, breaks the tackle in a foot race. Waddle at the 20, changes direction and gets pulled down by Kelly Ziegler at the 15-yard line. You've got to see this play to appreciate it. They shifted late and got their tail back. Bell into the slot, and he cleared the area, and Waddle, who doesn't have great speed, comes underneath him. As Bell cleared the area, he came underneath him, broke a couple of tackles, and turned what was going to be a first down play into a near touchdown and a big gainer for BC. And great effort by Ziegler, the linebacker, who chased down a wide receiver. And Waddle, of course, tried to change directions to fake Ziegler out, but Ziegler held his ground. We've got an injured Tennessee player back at the 45-yard line. As we'll seek to identify him momentarily, Boston College on a 48-yard gain. Score tied at three. We'll be back after this from your local station. Glacier Bay, Alaska and Old Milwaukee both mean something great to these guys. Glacier Bay means the one and only Alaskan King Crab. Sweet, fresh, and big. And Old Milwaukee means a great beer. Cold, crisp Old Milwaukee beer and smooth, golden Old Milwaukee light. There's nothing like the flavor of a special place. And Old Milwaukee beer. Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee light. Guys, it doesn't get any better than this. How do other Japanese imports see the 1988 Dodge Ram 50? To Toyota, Ram 50's roomier standard cab looks like this. To Mazda, Ram 50's more powerful standard engine looks like this. And to Nissan, Ram 50's bigger standard payload looks like this. So if you're looking for more than you bargained for, you'll find it at your Dodge dealer, along with the roomy new Ram 50 sports cab. Dodge import trucks, we're going places. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola at the top right of your screen. And now in the center, you see Jeremy Lincoln out of Toledo, Ohio, a true freshman being carried to the sidelines. He turned his ankle when Waddle cut. Let's take a look at Waddle's cut. Looks like he got hit by his own man as he went down as Waddle was running by the Boston College now at the 15-yard line of Tennessee, first and 10. Mike Power gives to Jim Bell. And Bell is hit in the backfield by Keith DeLong. DeLong sets him back to the 18-yard line. We heard that Tennessee was going to try to play tough on the line of scrimmage and blow some people in there, and DeLong proves it. What they do so well is their linebackers fill the holes and read so well, both DeLong and Ziegler, and he came that time. That time they tried to run sort of a little uh, sprint draw action with the tailback bell running back to the tight end side into the sideline, but uh, no way the linebacker was going to be fooled. Boss of two, second and 12. Yeah, yeah. Here comes Bell on the draw, and he's hit right at the line of scrimmage. Surges ahead. Brian Hunt out of DeSoto, Texas, leveled him just as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage. And watch Hunt, number 74, is going to make the play right on the nose. Watch him come off the block of the center, Shane Lee, and he just makes a great play down here. And this is where Tennessee's been tough today. When you're going in for that score, they just have not. They've been very tough inside their 20-yard line. Boston College knows very well. They've been inside there three times, and they've only come up with a field goal. Boston College 50% on third down. Back to throw. Big rush on. Power gets to the corner. Now throws across the green. It's nearly intercepted and knocked down at the last second. Intended for Ray Hilbert. Oh, no, Tom Waddle in the middle of the set. And Ray and McDaniel, Terry McDaniel, was the one who made the stop. But he was looking for Cherry. Marcus Cherry is in the end zone, covered pretty well. And he elects just to throw the ball here. He would have been better off really 
tucking it under and getting out of bounds. Instead, there was a near interception and great pursuit. Both linebackers coming that time, forced him out of the pocket, and BC now, kicking into the wind, has to try and get three instead of a touchdown. It's a 34-yard field goal right into the teeth of that wind, blowing at 15 miles an hour for Brian Lowe, who's one out of two. Carmody with a hold. Here's the kick. It is up. And it is good. Just barely. Austin College moves out in front of the 623 mark on Brian Lowe's 34-yard field goal. Three field goals to show, five turnovers so far. We've got a good one on our hands here near Boston as Boston College leads Tennessee by a score of 6-3. to three. It's amazing how some people go to great lengths to save string. Some have a bent for saving paper clips. But in the search to buy or sell something of lasting value, Smart people rely on the ability to save time and money. Save both. Rely on a Realtor. A message from the Memphis Board of Realtors. I'm Jim Jaggers. The big news originates at budget car sales. Here's Oliver C. Reed. All of these cars, plus a nationwide fleet now en route, will be driven to Budget Rent-A-Car's new showroom on Democrat Road for a total sellout this Saturday and Sunday only. Budget's $4,000 guaranteed minimum trade-in allowance also continues. Todd Demir says more. This lady bought a car from Budget Car Sales. Now she's flying free on Delta. And Jim, free Delta flights continue through Sunday also. Saturday and Sunday at Budget Democrat Road. More later. Austin College leading Tennessee by a score of 6-3 to three on a 34-yard Brian Lowe field goal. And it happened at the tail end of a 62-yard drive that took 3 minutes and 28 seconds to execute. The big play, a 48-yard pass play from Mike Power to Tom Walker. Very important for them to get on the board, but again, they lost an opportunity to get more points. And, and you've got to give credit to the Tennessee defense. When under pressure, they've come through today. They've created that uh, on first down situations. they put pressure on Mike Power, and they've shut off the tailback under those conditions so it's been a tough ball game the Tennessee defense has been on the field a lot but they're playing very well Thomas Woods back to receive the split kick of low picks it up on the bounce at the 12 straight ahead what speed at the 40 yard line brought down by Chuck Gregory at the 41 but a nice return by Thomas Woods that's your track man speed as you can see him come up here watch this he gets right up there and is good blocking in the middle good wedge blocking they get a chance and look at him find that seam and turn it on and that is Thomas Woods the sophomore from Gallatin Tennessee 31 yard return for Woods trying out a kickoff return this week especially with punt returning last year he led the SEC in that category as you look at Woods he looks to be a little bit lame. There's Hampton, play action, rolls out, fakes, he's going to keep. Chased down by Romanowski, good late block, and bringing him down is Kevin Pearson for a game of maybe one. This is the true bootleg, you will see it here. Watch him come out here on the bootleg, and a great play by Romanowski. The defense, good job by the BC secondary, they've got good coverage downfield. Romanowski, 53, comes over this block from behind, and they make a play on him. Second down and nine, Tennessee. Clock moving, 546 left first half. Boston College by a field goal. 6-3, score. And Sterling Hinton wants time. One thing Boston College had hoped to do today with new quarterback was change their defensive alignment to the point where they might change Sterling Hinton's read to a degree. And that apparently happened on that situation. We have a timeout, 537 left to go in the first half. BC by three. How do other Japanese imports see the 1988 Dodge Ram 50? To Toyota, Ram 50's roomier standard cab looks like this. To Mazda, Ram 50's more powerful standard engine looks like this. And to Nissan, Ram 50's bigger standard payload looks like this. So if you're looking for more than you bargained for, you'll find it at your Dodge dealer, along with the roomy new Ram 50 sports cab. Dodge import trucks, we're going places.
at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, next week on most of these stations. Boston College yeah. travels to Notre Dame to take on the Fighting Irish. Kick off at high noon, and we hope you're with us. Great American Independent Football. We've got a good one by the Horns here this afternoon. Boston College leading Tennessee 6-3. to three. As we look at Sterling Hinton after taking the timeout, second and nine. Throws, it is complete to Miller. Miller cuts up inside, gets over midfield, and brought down at the 48-yard line of BC. He's going to be close to the first down. Third time they've run that little flip screen. They've got three receivers to that side. He gets it out to Miller, and it shows you the athletic ability of Anthony Miller and his quickness. Watch him decide he's not going outside. He's going to find a seam inside, and he turns what could be a short gain into a first down for Tennessee. The ball's up over the 50-yard line. They're now in BC territory. Can you imagine the look on Ed Durant's face when he's got to go against world-class speed one-on-one, -on -one, nothing between he and the end zone. He made the play, forced Miller back into the interference. First and ten. Play action and hitting the throw. Looking for an arm. Has a man deep, and he overthrew him, but what an arm by Hinton. He had the protection, too. He not only had the receiver upfield, and that's the particular case. That was Alvin Harper, the freshman, who's 6'5", 180 pounds, 11 receptions thus far this year. He had him deep, but he shows he's got the arm, but he got good protection that time. He's a really outstanding athlete, Sterling Hinton. It's just the fact that they didn't expect to use him this early. Look at this thing, 60 with the wind at his back, but he really laid it out there. Look at that. Duran looks up in amazement. Second down and ten. The option is the pitch in the corner of Cobb. And Cobb is cut down by Dave Johnson. Johnson, the strong safety, comes up to make the play at the 45. Dave Johnson is only a sophomore, and they like him here at BC. He runs a 4-5-40, and he loves to hit. And he's in there because of the injuries at strong safety this season. And here they run a pure option to keep here by the quarterback. He decides to put it on the corner as he pitches it out to, to Reggie Cobb. But there's Johnson playing perfect position, making the hit. Tennessee, one out of five on third down conversions. Of seven or eight yards to go on third. They're looking at third and seven. Hinton the throw intended for Middlebrooks is tight end. It's incomplete. McPherson covering on the play. This brings the punting unit on. And that ball was perfectly catchable. Good job. Perfectly thrown by the quarterback Hinton. Middlebrooks just doesn't handle it. Force the kick. Hit him in the hand. Garmin now will have the wind at his back. Had a 53 yarder earlier to go with a 39 yarder. 43-yard average. Here comes the kick. He lays into it. Waddle calls for the fair catch. Gets away, but it's going to take a bounce inside the 10 at the 9-yard line. Good job by the punter. What a great kick that was. Perfectly placed, and it tells you why he is such an outstanding punter. Harmon, number 41. One of the leaders in the SEC in that category, and so Boston College gets the ball. Their defense stiffened that time. And a great play by Dave Johnson. A 35-yard punt. That time by Garmin, but plenty of hang time, and he planted it inside the 10. So Mike Power with a wind in his face and 90 yards away from Pater. With 4.05 left to go in the first half, Boston College 6-3 over Tennessee. Turner's in the backfield. Checking off at the line is Power. Back to throw. He'll sneak up inside. Spies tries to get away once. He gets out to about the 12-yard line. Making the stop is going to be Hayworth, number 88. Very interestingly, uh, Boston College came out in a wide set this time, and Power looking to throw short to one of his upbacks were in the slot, elected not to after that last interception, kept it wisely, tucked it under and gained three yards rather than put that ball up deep in his own territory. And with a wind in his face as well. Power on second and seven. Peppers from Albany, New York, with a tackle, but Jim Bell with a carry. And he's running behind the right guard, Wydell, and the right tackle, David Wydell. They afford him that opportunity, and a good block by Jim Turner, number 40, the senior fullback. That sprung him loose. Here we see it again as he breaks back. Number 40 gets the block on the linebacker that time, Ziegler, and gives him a chance to get into the secondary. That's Bell's longest run of the season, 24 yards. First to 10, BC. Dropping back, power. Intercepted, Tennessee. That's 
Kelly Ziegler coming up with the interception. Great call by, by the Tennessee defense. Ziegler got in great position, got in front of the curl man, and was there as power. Never saw him and put the ball right in his hands. Watch this. Just a great drop by the linebacker. He gets lots of depth. He's looking for Waddle, number 16, and they've got him covered. And Tennessee now getting the advantage of the wind at their back in excellent field position as you look at Kelly Ziegler. One of the defensive stalwarts for Tennessee. Here comes the pitch. Cobb on the corner. Hit in the backfield by Rico Lobby. Rico Lobby at the 40-yard line. Rico Lobby made the hit, but the key was Dave Nugent, the nose guard, who got penetration, was in the backfield. You'll see Nugent, 71. The fullback never has a chance to block him. Howard, and that puts it one-on-one -on -one for Lobby. He makes the hit. They need those kind of plays now because they've got good field position on him. Lobby has been injured the last couple of times out. Injured in the Rutgers game. Second and 12. Draw play. It's Cobb again. Cobb, a workhorse, gets down to the 35-yard line, a gain of seven. Bill Romanowski tracked him down. Cobb really accelerates well. He does remind you a little bit of Herschel Walker, the way he starts from scratch. That's a very interesting comment. We've just come up with the statistics that all four interceptions today have been thrown into the wind. So there may be a factor. We'll see as this game develops. Blowing right at the open end of that stadium. It's at an angle, so it blows through the open. Affecting play. Hinton. Big rush by Peter Gray. Lost the run for his wife. Gray and Nugent tracking him down. Going for a loss at the 39. Dave Nugent. He's looking all the way again for Alvin Harper, number 81, the freshman downfield. He, when he's covered and he's put a little pressure on by Nugent, 71 here, he tries to reverse himself. But a great job by Gray, who kept his depth and never gave him a chance to get behind him and reverse his field. Big play. Nugent finally made the tackle. Garment of punt on fourth and about three acres. Big win at his back. Fourth and 40, the exact call. Waddle will let it step. And it falls dead at the 27-yard line. You've got to be impressed by Bob Garman, the punter. He, he kicks the ball away from people, and he gets a roll on it. Excellent job by Garman. So Boston College, with a fine defensive play, spurs the 37-yard punt by Bob Garman, and they'll take the ball back over at the 24-yard line. So the interception is thwarted by the Boston College defense. A minute and nine left to go in the first half of play. It's Boston College leading Tennessee by a score of 6-3. High formation, that's Casparello moving in motion. Back again is Flutie. There's Bell. Bell up over the 25 to about the 26 yard line. In on the stop for Tennessee is going to be McCray and Kelly Z. Jack McNell, baby, very happy. To, and there's a timeout called here by Boston College with uh, 56, 56 seconds left in the uh, second period, the first half. But uh, Bicknell has to think about it. Does he want to put the ball up here at this stage? He's had some interceptions. He's got the wind in his quarterback power's face. And he's leading 6-3. to three. So there's some decisions made on that sideline. And here's some scores around the country. North Carolina leading Maryland by a score of 20 to nothing at College Park. Tar Heels still have ACC title hopes. Iowa leading Indiana. 11th ranked Hoosiers having a fine season. And Iowa trying to put a crimp in it right there by 10. And State leading West Virginia. That's a big game for both teams, especially West Virginia. They have a three-game winning streak going into that ballgame. And our score here in the first half shows Boston College ahead of Tennessee by a score of 6-3. to three. Eagles looking at second down and seven. They have one timeout remaining here in the first half with 56 seconds left to go. Mike Powell sends Flutie to the top of your screen. Hand off. It's going to go to Giles, I believe. New running back. That's going to be Mike Sanders. Sanders on the carry for Boston College. Gain on the play of about three or four yards. Four yards make it. Third down and three. Very interesting. Tennessee has two timeouts remaining. But they're not using him here in that third down situation. Boston College, third and three, looking to kill the clock. 22 seconds left to go. Here's Power, rolling out, wants to throw, has his tight end, but it's incomplete. Pretty good coverage on the play. Mike Kelly is covering for Tennessee. 
Excellent job by the outside linebacker. Kelly looked across and picked up on the tight end, Casparella, coming across again. Number 85, Casparella, as he came across in the bootleg action. I am very impressed by the Tennessee linebackers, both the inside linebackers, who are real hitters and find the football, as well as Miller, Hayworth, and Kelly on the outside. Very active. Kelly, the drop in, who goes into coverage, making a nice play on Casparilla that time. And here is David Rooney to punt. Big rush is on. He gets it away. Back to receive is Kramer at his own 30, and he is tracked down by Ivan Caesar. Caesar from St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands tracks him down, and the clock stops with six seconds remaining. And so Tennessee, will they take another stab at it with a win at their back and a certain last play of the first half? Or will they be content to just sit that uh, a field goal back and go into intermission? In a first half that has seen five turnovers, four interceptions, and all four into the teeth of about a 15 to 20 mile an hour win. And it's got people thinking about it now. And of course, Tennessee uh, coming into this ball game with a new quarterback. And they're just going to kill the clock here. And that quarterback, of course, here is Sterling Hinton. Sterling Hinton will watch the clock wind down and the first half comes to a close. It's been a great one. Turnovers, defensive field position, fine defensive play between these two teams. And Boston College leaves with a field goal lead. A pair of field goals by Brian Lowe, a 34 and 37 yards, sandwiched around a Phil Rich 30 yarder. And coming up at halftime, we've got a good one for you. We'll look at the Great American Independence Week in Review. Our great American champions and a special feature on a Syracuse player I think you'll enjoy our college football scoreboard stats highlights and more so stay with us we're at people in this country work hard every day not for fame or fortune do they strive but the fruits of their labor are worth more than their pay and it's time a few of them were recognized you work hard for every dollar you spend. Now get five bucks back when you buy 12 quarts of any Valvoline motor oil. You work a 40-hour week for a living just to send it on down the line. Manage. To handle or direct with skill. Rockwell International Management stimulates the work of its 120,000 employees. One in six a scientist or engineer. Their elegant solutions to customer needs make Rockwell a world leader. Rockwell International. Managing high technology for global markets. Billy D. Williams on body language. You know, body language tells you a lot about what a person's thinking. For instance, that means she has an interest in the finer things in life. That means she also wants a little fun in her life, but only with the right man. And now she's pouring a Colt 45. And we all know what that means. You mind if I join you? You must have read my mind. Something like that. The power of Colt 45. It works every time. At 12 noon. It's great American football. Great American independent football, in fact, at Notre Dame. So don't miss it. 12 noon, Boston College at Notre Dame. Welcome back to Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, Alumni Stadium, site of our game today between the Boston College Eagles and Tennessee. Steve Harton here along with Bob Cassiola. Great first half of action. Boston College by a couple of field goals, leading it here by a score of 6-3. to three. We've seen lots of great defense played so far this afternoon. A lot of good hitting, and the offenses are trying to open up. They've had opportunities. They've had field position, but they can't turn it into anything more than field goals. It's just a good hitting game, and I think the key has been the Boston College defense has come to play. They've tried to make some changes, and they've done it successfully. They put pressure, and they're playing a good game defensively. But most importantly, I think BC has had opportunities on offense, and Tennessee has held them tough. You got to think about those three turnovers. They enjoyed three turnovers in the first uh, three minutes, actually the first five minutes of play, and only came away with a field goal. That's important. It sure is, and the fact that they had the ball deep in those territories. But they're playing tough. They look very confident out there, and I think it's an improved BC team over the recent weeks we've seen. But Tennessee will come back in this second half. They've got to settle themselves a little bit at quarterback, where they've had to make some changes because of injuries. Sterling Hinton appears to be the man for Tennessee at the moment. We'll see. Let's take a look at our 
great American independence week in review a week ago looking at Syracuse the Orange men continue on 52 to 6 over a very good Colgate team in Division 1 double they just have so much offense with McPherson and quarterback but more importantly they're a tough defensive team they are legitimately one of the top teams in the country they've won eight straight as you see the graphic going back to 1986 and you've got to go back to their national championship year of 19 to 59 to find a start so good for the Orange men of Syracuse another team having a great start of this season and then we'll see next week for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish under Lou Holtz in his second year he's got them up there in the top 10 let's take a look at what they did last week against Southern Cal and there's that quarterback we mentioned him a few weeks back and his name is Tony Rice he's a great athlete and we see him here the ability to throw and the run to get into the end zone 50, this kid is a star 56 yards rushing 47 yards passing those were the numbers that Tony Rice put on the board and this is Tim Brown. We've shown you this highlight, it seems, endlessly this season. Brown, who seems to be the front runner of the Heisman Trophy running. There you see him running out of the wingback position into the end zone for a touchdown. They really showcase him well, and he's so versatile, so talented. Here's that Notre Dame no-name defense, but Ned Bolkar is a name you can pin your hopes on. Yes, sir. He's an outstanding linebacker, and he makes the play along with Brian Flannery there. The Notre Dame defense was up to it. Here we see Mark Green, another back, coming into the game to score. Big win for him over really an ancient rival of theirs, Southern Cal, 26-15. And the Rutgers Scarlet Knights greeted Army at Mikey Stadium. 40,000 looked on, and Henry Henderson took over with a big day against the Cadets. Whenever you go against the wishbone, you try and keep the ball away from him, and Rutgers' intention was to get the ball in the hands of this man, 27, Henry Henderson. They did that along with their quarterback, Scott Ernie. Ernie's favorite target was Tyrone McQueen on the afternoon. He's an outstanding one, and in close, Rutgers likes to go to their big fullback, Curtis Stevens. Rutgers beats Army by a score of 27 to 14. This could be the team to watch not only this year, but possibly next year. West Virginia, Anthony Brown, he's a good running back. We saw him earlier in the year, and we think that West Virginia has probably as talented running backs as anybody in the East, and Anthony Brown surely is one of them. But the real key has been the development, and here's one of them right here, of utilizing their strengths, and here's Talley, one of their really fine athletes, John Talley. A former quarterback working out of the wingback spot, two touchdowns, but look at Major Harris, a great freshman quarterback coming into his own. Coming into his own, we knew he could run, and here he shows his ability in the option, but he also has developed now in recent weeks as a passer. And as he comes along, I want to tell you, West Virginia is going to be a lot of team for anybody they play. They mauled Boston College right here. We move to Annapolis, Maryland, and Navy taking on Pittsburgh. Sal Janela of Pittsburgh goes to his Mr. Reliable, old Ironhead, Craig Hayward. And he got another 100-yard day. This time he carried the ball 37 times for 140 44 yards as he runs inside, outside, and as we see here, runs over people on his way to, to setting all kinds of records. He's just a tremendous competitor. There he scores the game's only touchdown. Of course, he was the only instrument of warfare that Pitt seemed to want to display last week. We'll see a very good defensive effort by Ray Worthington of Navy. This is a Navy club. They're starting to come along. They're the awfully way. young and they're awfully thin, but they're also very determined, and they put up a great battle last week against pit this is james bradley you see what he did on the day 12 carries 71 yards navy will come up short in this game by a score of 10 to 6 but most importantly they stayed very strong with pittsburgh all the way and let's take a look at today's slate of action temple and army two teams who want to stop losing so. yeah they've got injuries army does and uh, temple of course is struggling of course we saw an early score with navy out of notre dame a tough chore for them but there's the big one syracuse at pittsburgh supremacy in the east at stake between those two pittsburgh trying to get into the top 20 they're close Syracuse is in the top 10 Rutgers at Vanderbilt it's been a fine season so far for the Scarlet but a tough game for him going down against the Southeast Conference team it's homecoming down there and they know they got to win this one to keep them their hopes alive for perhaps some bowl appearances at the end and Vanderbilt leads that game early in the first quarter by a field goal three nothing and there's West Virginia at Penn State they haven't won there since 1954 but they got a three game winning streak to try to preserve down there they sure do and West Virginia we think are coming alive as we mentioned earlier but, of course, Penn State's coming off a week's vacation after the Syracuse game, so they're probably geared up for the Mountaineers. And our score right now here at halftime shows Boston College leading Tennessee by a score of 6-3 to three at Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Back with more after this from your local station. The tradition of horsepower.
Budweiser and the king of beers. A tradition of horsepower that's making waves. Racing fans, this Bud's for you. Just sign here, man. But this is more than what your sign says. Well, sure, you're using your credit card instead of cash. Excuse me. If your service station charges a higher price for credit cards than cash, take your business elsewhere. Take your business to Gulf, the people who don't charge you more for credit cards. Come again. Gulf, one low price, cash or credit. Hunting season opens soon and Sportsman Supermarket is ready with a full line of name brand hunting supplies and muzzle loading supplies. Sportsman Supermarket has rifles and scopes by Browning, Remington, Smith & Wesson and Ruger. Ask about Sportsman Supermarket's special finance plan, 10% down, 90 days same as cash with 12 to 36 months to pay. We also have a large stock of hunting boots and clothing. Sportsman Supermarket, everything a sportsman needs. It's halftime in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts at Alumni Stadium and in Boston College leads Tennessee by a score of six to three in our great American independent football game this afternoon. Steve Martin here along with former Princeton and Connecticut coach Bob Cassiola and each week during our great American independent football broadcast we bring you a feature we call Great American Champions where we profile a great football player from one of the school nine schools that we profile each and every week and Bob you look at a guy like Larry Zonka and what he meant to Syracuse during the glory years. There. People forget about that because they think of Zonka and the, the Dolphins and the great career he had there. But Syracuse had such great running backs during that period, and Zonka came along as the genuinely big back who carried the ball so many times was so effective. And, of course, his reputation in the NFL, as Bob said, is very well known. So let's once again meet yet another great American champion. Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions presents Great American Champions. Larry Zonka, the Zonk, was considered a one-man gangbuster and Mr. Wonderful during his years at Syracuse University. Known as a hard-hitting and frequently unstoppable fullback, Zonka set and destroyed record after record on the way to a superstar football career. As captain of the team and a unanimous All-American, Larry left Syracuse with career records that would take years for anyone to conquer. Today, as he reflects back on those years, his first thoughts are not necessarily football-related. My young bride and myself were at Syracuse in 1966, and she gave birth to our eldest son, Douglas, uh, born right there at the campus. And uh, that certainly has to be the highlight of anyone's uh, college career or lifelong career or whatever. Uh, I think he was nine pounds and three ounces, and... Uh, was there with me at Syracuse for the first two or two and a half years of his life. The other players on the team uh, used him very frequently as a football. They'd throw him back and forth in my living room. I think the other thing from Syracuse that I uh, kind of hold uh, dear and remember as though it were yesterday was the coaching staff. And uh, uh, whether it was Rocky Pirro or Bill Bell or uh, Joe Zombathy or Coach Schwartzwalder himself, uh, we had probably one of the best coaching staffs uh, I think that was ever assembled for collegiate football. Of course, I'm obviously very prejudiced. I know it was the best coaching staff ever assembled for me, for Larry Zonka. In 1968, the Zonk became a first-round draft pick of the Miami Dolphins. During his 12-year pro career, he led the Dolphins to three straight Super Bowl appearances. In August of 1987, Zonka's efforts on the football field were recognized when he was inducted into Pro Football's Hall of Fame. Larry spent the last several years as general manager of the Jacksonville Bulls. Today, with the collapse of the USFL, he's become involved in the world of advertising. When, in fact, I did participate in one or two of the commercials, they, uh, they being the uh, brewing company, called me back and uh, asked if I was interested in traveling around the country and doing some promotions. And uh, I said, yes, a few, and uh, a few's turned into a many, a great many. And I've been on the road a great deal. I do two things. I promote the product, which is Miller Lite, which I enjoy and have enjoyed since 1974 or 5. And the other is I talk a lot about football and what's happening in the sports world. And then uh, thirdly, certainly not lastly, I, I do a lot of uh, conversations or participate in a lot of conversations about the filming of the commercials and dealing with the other Lite All-Stars, which is uh, 
really unique. It's kind of a small fraternity. Parker. And action. Oh, I'm talking about the end of Yeah, you're right, Numa. I wonder what they want. Probably our Miller Lite because it tastes great. A great American champion, Larry Zonka, profiled here. As Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions presents the Boston College Tennessee game. We're at halftime. Boston College leading by a score of six to three at intermission. And welcome back. And along with me is John Junkers, who is the associate executive director of the Fiesta Bowl. As you know, November 21st is the day that the invitations go out. And John, the Fiesta Bowl got a great coup on everybody last year with Miami and Penn State at the side of the national championship. As you look at the field of college football right now, what are the prospects of something similar happening this year? Well, Steve, we were very blessed last year uh, with the Penn State-Miami matchup, of course. This year, uh, it's, it's really wide open, and there's a couple of games still to be played before the 21st, but uh, we think we're going to have a great game no matter what. There's some good teams out there, of course, we've seen two great teams today, and Eastern football is very much in the center of the picture, of course, with Syracuse kind of coming to the fore this year. Well, you look at uh, Oklahoma-Nebraska, of course, that's going to be a big game on November 21st. That could determine where a lot of teams fall into place. If, of course, the two big teams go elsewhere to maybe the Orange Bowl, what sort of field are you going to look at for the Fiesta Bowl? Well, I think that uh, the, the Oklahoma-Nebraska loser, of course, has to go somewhere and shouldn't be ranked much lower than fifth in the country. Uh, we think that's a great team for somebody. Uh, we think the Southeastern Conference has many, many good teams. Of course, we're seeing one today. Uh, we think uh, some other areas you have to look at, of course, uh, Syracuse is very interesting. Pittsburgh, depending on the outcome of that game today. Notre Dame, of course, is on everyone's list. And then, of course, uh, uh, you have to consider some possibilities, maybe in the Big Ten, if Ohio State or Michigan were to were to launch a, a late drive at the end of the year. And, of course, Florida State is up there, too. So it's, it's wide open for the Bulls this year. Tough final question before we leave you, John. Last year, you had a chance at making a national champion. You moved the date. You got a great setup. There's been a lot of talk about a national championship in college football. Where, do the Fie where does the Fiesta Bowl sit as far as that's concerned? And why do the Bulls oppose a national championship playoff? Oh, quite simply, Steve, we don't think a, a national playoff is necessary. The national championship has been decided in bowls uh, 12 of the last 13 years. Uh, last year, we did it on the field. Of course, the help with our new identity with Sunkiss Growers brings more dollars into college football. We think that college football has more to lose than to gain. Uh, $50 million will accrue to colleges and universities through the bowl system this year. Let's not kill the goose that lays that golden egg. John, thank you very much for being with us, and best of luck whatever your matchup's going to be. Thanks very much. Look to see you on New Year's Day. Okay. John Junkers, who's the Associate Executive Director of the Fiesta Bowl, joining us here at halftime. Great American Independent Football coming away from Boston College. The Eagles lead Tennessee by three. People in this country work hard every day not for fame or fortune do they strive but the fruits of their labor are worth more than their pay and it's time a few of them were recognized you work hard for every dollar you spend now get five bucks back when you buy 12 quarts of any valvoline motor oil you work a 40 hour week for a living just to send it on down the line here's to the winners mountains here's to the miracles they make us see holiday inn welcomes you the people who know that winning at life is working hard at it and living it fully day after day here's to the winners all of us can be holiday inn salutes you here's to the winners we're on your way Introducing new Alka-Seltzer Plus Nighttime Cold Medicine. It helps me go to sleep, which is difficult when you can't breathe. Helps clear my nose right up. It really did. New Alka-Seltzer Plus Nighttime Cold Medicine. A new nighttime formula without alcohol helps put your cold to sleep fast. It helped clear my sinuses through here where the pressure builds up so I could breathe and sleep better. A clear head and a good night's sleep. New Alka-Seltzer Plus Nighttime Cold Medicine helps put your cold to sleep fast. This is a 19-inch television with a picture as crisp and clear as any you'll find. Now imagine a picture just as crisp, just as clear, but larger. In fact, it's 86% larger than even a 26-inch screen. It's the world's first 35-inch direct view television, the television that only one manufacturer could put together. Mitsubishi. 
a pair of Brian Lowe field goals to go against the Phil Rich field goal. And that's our score at halftime. Boston College leading Tennessee. Let's take a look at some scores around the country here. North Carolina leading Maryland by a score of 20 to nothing. Maryland had hopes in that Atlantic Coast Conference. And of course, Notre Dame way ahead of Navy at halftime. That's it at a mission, obviously. Miami, third ranked in the country, leading East Carolina 14 to 3. Big one in the Big Ten, Iowa. At home against Indiana, ranked number 11. They're ahead of them. They're shutting them out at the second quarter. And Rutgers has tied it with Vanderbilt. Second quarter action at three apiece. Clemson leading Wake Forest down in Death Valley. Second quarter action, 10 to nothing. And in the Big Ten, Michigan coming after that lost Indiana now, leading 3 nothing over Northwestern in the second period. And an Ivy League battle between Princeton and Pennsylvania. Scoreless in the second quarter at Philadelphia. We said something about West Virginia. They're coming along and they're making it tough up at uh, State College. They're tied with Penn State. Seven apiece in the second. Here's a battle for the Ivy lead. It's Harvard leading Brown seven to nothing. Both teams went in at three and zero oh on that one. Connecticut ahead of Villanova in a Yankee conference game. I said three and zero. Oh. It should be three and one for Harvard and Brown. Our score right now shows Boston College leading Tennessee by a score of six to three. We're at intermission and we'll be back after this from your local stations. Hi, I'm Mark Davis for Rhodes Lock and Associates, your desktop publishing professionals. Let Rhodes Lock supply you with the equipment and training necessary to produce first-rate quality brochures, newsletters, sales sheets, and catalogs right at your desk. The desktop publisher can typeset, position grids, columns, and copy, and will even reproduce the photographs and artwork you give it. Never before has it been possible for businesses to have such a quick and efficient means to get their info out. Call Rhodes Lock today at 332-3000. Your family needs a reliable heating system, beginning with a long-life Bryant furnace. Bryant high-efficiency furnaces are up to 97% efficient, and they're built to last a lifetime. Comfort you can count on for less, for life, all from Bryant, where long life runs in the family. Condair has a $150 rebate right now on Deluxe Long Life Bryant Furnaces. Call them at 324-3864. That's Condair at 324-3864. I know what I want. Ride Pontiac Pack. No time to wander. You got a track. Get the feel of real style and performance in the Pontiac Grand Am. I can handle that. Can you handle Grand Am sticker priced as low as $9,869? I can handle that. Drive Pontiac Drive. Ride Pontiac Pack. Pat Carter, Foster, and Courtesy. Pontiac Pack. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. Great American independent football. Boston College leading by three. Very first play of the game. Randy Sanders goes to the flats. Wants to find his own receiver, but instead runs in to Garrick McPherson. McPherson, the cornerback, 48, just steps up, makes the interception, gives BC immediate field position and a chance for a score. And, of course, Tennessee, which stopped several BC drives late this one, would take place as Andre Creamer is going to pick off this pass from Mike Power. Throwing into the wind, Power lops one down there, and then it is Kramer who picks it off right from out of nowhere and gives Tennessee excellent field position. They would drive for a field goal as a result of that turnover and get it down to three to piece at that point in time. Now we see uh, the option here on the goal line as Power is trying to get in for a score as he turns up field. He gets hit from behind, and he's going to fumble his football, and the recovery is made by the linebacker who's had an outstanding first period, the first half, Keith DeLong for Tennessee. And, of course, that followed a Boston College pickoff of a, of a pass that resulted uh, in a deep drive, and that thwarted Boston College. But let's take a look at Jim Bell. He's carried the load for Boston College this far today. Coming off a hamstring injury that's really slowed him down the last two weeks, Bell looks 100% today, and he's been a big difference for him. 21 carries, 89 yards for him, and here are the halftime stats. BC in the rushing category and the passing category and in the total yardage category. But the turnovers are even at six. The turnovers are even. BC's had their opportunities. As we know, in any football game, the ball always comes full circle. And Tennessee really is looking to do something in this 
second half. They will kick off to the Boston College Eagles, and they will take the win. They have the wind at their back in this third quarter, so Boston College... Welcome back to Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola, great American independent football, Boston College leading by three. Very first play of the game, Randy Sanders goes to the flats, wants to find his own receiver, but instead runs into Garrick McPherson. McPherson, the cornerback, 48, just steps up, makes the interception, gives B.C. immediate field position and a chance for a score. And, of course, Tennessee would stop several B.C. drives late. This one would take place as Andre Creamer is going to pick off this pass from Mike Power, throwing into the wind. Power lops one down there, and then it is Kramer who picks it off right from out of nowhere and gives Tennessee excellent field position. They would drive for a field goal as a result of that turnover and get it down to three to piece at that point in time. Now we see uh, the option here on the goal line as Powers trying to get in for a score as he turns up field. He gets hit from behind and he's going to fumble his football and the recovery is made by the linebacker who's had an outstanding first period, the first half, Keith DeLong for Tennessee. And of course that followed a Boston College pickoff of a of a pass that resulted uh, in a deep drive and that thwarted Boston College. But let's take a look at Jim Bell. He's carried the load for Boston College this far today. Coming off a hamstring injury that's really slowed him down the last two weeks, Bell looks 100% today and he's been a big difference for him. 21 carries, 89 yards for him and here are the halftime stats. BC in the rushing category and the passing category and in the total yardage category. But the turnovers are even at six. The turnovers are even. BC's had their opportunities as we know in any football game. The ball always comes full circle and Tennessee really is looking to do something in this second half. They will kick off to the Boston College Eagles, and they will take the win. They have the win at their back in this third quarter, so Boston College will get it back in the fourth quarter. As you see part of the Tennessee contingent, the two cheerleaders, Tennessee very well represented here in Boston. Some 6,000 fans on the plane ride up. They just about took over our airplane. They really followed their team very well. Tennessee only 76 yards total offense. Three turnovers, one of the reasons for that. Bell, of course, the big man rushing and lows two field goals in three attempts. One of those, the difference. And here is Frager taking the kickoff at the one-yard line from Borgagoni. Borgagnoni, the kicker from Reno, Nevada, one of the top kickers in the country a week, a year ago in the prep ranks as the return comes out to about the 20-yard line, and that's where BC will start first and 10. Tennessee had the choice in the second half because Boston College elected with the choice the first half to kick off, and they, too, elected to take the win. So Mike Power will face that win in the third. Look at that breeze, and that's going right at Mike Power's face. Turner and Bell the setback. This is a deep hand off to Bell. But Tennessee has gotten used to seeing him come at them, and Marion Hobby stops him not long after the 20-yard line. The big defensive tackle from Irondale, Alabama, comes from the left side of the screen, and this is a delaying action, a little counter play. But watch Hobby number 90 appear, and he comes down to make the hit. Just breaks down the block of David Wydell, a right tackle. Big hit by Hobby. He goes 6'3", 253, and he's only a sophomore. Hobby and Havanek are the tackles. McCray, the nose guard. Kelly and Miller, the defensive ends for Tennessee. Here's a handoff. Bell again. This time, more room. Not over 25 to the 26-yard line. And he's brought down on the play by Kelly Day. out of Dayton, Ohio, a freshman. Very important here to get the ball upfield and try and get some first downs without trying to put it up and they're trying to break it off tackle. They do there. Good play by Days. The free safety coming up from Dayton, Ohio. Days makes the hit. And now Mike Powell is looking at a third and about four. After the six-yard game from Bell, Boston College six to three. Waddle and Casparillo flip flop. Powell playing big, wants to throw. Rushes up in. Gets the first down at the 32-yard line. Picked up there on the stop by Mike Kelly out of Chattanooga. He's hurt. Power is hurt. Power is hurt, and this brings up an interesting situation. Well, because if Power couldn't go back in there, Camp House is hurt. Let's Watch this as he makes the play here. They don't want him to do this, but he knows he's got to make a first down. His receivers are covered. He's looking where those stakes are, and he goes for it. But he gets hit right there. As 
Okay. On that looks like that left shoulder. Yep. Still in there. Still at the quarterback spot. Here comes Woo. the pitch to Bell. Bell coming to the corner. Nice running room and gets out to about the 37-yard line. Working the running game, working back into the boundary, which they were successful at early in the ball game. Coming back away from the field and away from the formation, running to the tight end, running behind the fullback Turner. There's Bell trying to get tough yardage in there and makes some good yardage, picks up about uh, seven yards. Bell nearing the 100 mark, 23 totes so far. We're just five plays into the second half. In motion, that's Cherry. And off Bell. Bell with his 24th carry isn't as fortunate. Runs into Richard Cooper right at the point of attack, maybe a yard. Well, I'll tell you, he runs into a big target. 77 is 6'5", 285. And watch him come up here and make the hit. They only give up about 127 yards a game in rushing. <laughs> They're tough. Tough playing, tough against the run defense. That's Cooper. He's a good one. Third down conversions, BC, five out of 11. We're looking at third and two here. Power, handoff. And it is going to go to Frazier. Frazier in Tennessee territory at the 33. McDaniel with a stop. They came out with a very wide set that time. Waddle and Flutie in the wide side of the field to the right of the screen, and they just ran the ball back inside with Fraser. Fraser's only a freshman. He's out of uh, Lynn, Massachusetts. An outstanding burner, real speed. Jack McNell is very high on this kid, and at 5'9", 169, he can break the play, and he showed it there. One of many fine running backs that Jack McNell has recruited over the last couple of years, a gain of 27. First and 10 at the 34. This is Turner for his first carry of the day. Up over the 25-yard line to the 24-yard line. Great story behind Jim Turner. He's a senior. He's one of the tri-captains on this team. He's out of uh, Massachusetts. He's one of eight children, and he's a walk-on. He's a walk-on, and coming into this season, he never had negative yardage carrying the football. And he fights for everything he can get here, and he'll get about eight or nine yards and very close to a first down. It'll be second and short. Jim Turner out of Braintree, Massachusetts. Out of the eye formation, Turner and Power, or rather Turner and Bell to set back. This is Turner again, and it looks like he's got the first down. Surges ahead toward the 20-yard line, needed to about the 24. Johnny Major's concerned with this Boston College drive into the wind in the third quarter. Took his chances by taking the wind and kicking into it, and taking the wind to his back and kicking off the second half. There's Jack Bicknell, who we've mentioned many times, signals the formations from the sideline and substitutes with a player to play, but he signals the formations. 11-21 left to go in the third quarter. Boston College leading 6-3 over Tennessee. BC with the ball, first and ten. Power, deep hand off to Bell. Bell off left guard. Jumps to the 15-yard line. Peppers has to come up to make the stop. Good job on the left side, number 70. Oliver gets the block there for him and gives him a chance to cut up inside and make the play. And again, we talk about his ability to, to jump. His, his ability to leap is also his cutting ability. Jim Bell has really been a, a tremendous runner, averaging just under five yards per carry this season from the tailback position. Second and five as Bell carried for 101 yards on that carry, 25 on a day. Here's Braun on the fullback, straight ahead. Notice how Boston College, Bob, now seems to have a lot of confidence now that Brian Shanley is back at center, and it seems to make the guards who play around him play so much better. Great story with Shanley. He's a junior. He's from Williamsville, New York, and he's been the starting center. He was hurt early in the year, and they missed him, but his brother is on the Tennessee team. An outstanding freshman recruit, as a matter of fact. Likely won't see action today. There is Jim Bell. He's passed the century mark this afternoon. Is over 700 yards rushing thus far this season. 25 carries, 101 yards, and looking at third and two. All at the 12-yard line. Here is Powell rolling out of the middle of the corner. Five, and down to the three-yard line. Hobby rode him out, but it's a nice game for a first. And a great call from the BC bench. They came out in the pro set. He runs a little fake counteraction here, but this is a key ball away. He had no intention of throwing the ball or handing the ball off. It was a designed quarterback keeper here, and he gets great yardage, and they got the best field position, the most threatening position of the day. Four shots from the two. 
First and goal from the two-yard line. D.C. faithful stand and cheer. As Boston College. Both ends in tight. Full house backfield. His slot up and over. He's going to be short. Came out in a full house backfield. A T formation that gave the ball to the fullback and tried to get him up because Hislop is a vaulter. He can get up off the ground. How much of a formation change that time for Jack McNell? Hands over the head means do this one again. Ground level, we see the fullback taking the ball here and watch the Tennessee defense get him before he can get over to that goal line. Hislop, St. Pierre. Here is Bell carrying out to Hislop. Does he get in? Close again. Looks like, yes, he's in the touchdown. Willie Hislop. He doesn't carry often, but when he does, it usually results in a score. Here it is, the same play, just a reverse by the quarterback, giving it back to him. He's got to fight for it. He's got to run through Kelly Ziegler, and he just about gets to the goal line and crosses the plane. BC gets in a very impressive drive against the wind off the opening kickoff. He's had nine carries this season, four touchdowns. Ryan Lowe getting set for the point after in the hold of Sean Carmody. It's, again, it's up, and it is good. A well-constructed drive against the wind that started at the BC 20-yard line results in our first touchdown of the afternoon. A Willie Hislop run from one yard out. Boston College 13, Tennessee 3. Here's to the winners, those who move mountains. Here's to the miracles they make us see. Holiday Inn welcomes you, the people who know that winning at life is working hard at it and living it fully day after day. Here's to the winners, all of us can be. Holiday Inn salutes you. Here's to the winners. We're on your way. Delta Airlines flight attendant Irene Lockwoody loves to fly. Are you still here? My son was supposed to meet me. Well, I'll wait with you. That kid is always late. What she loves most are the people she meets. He must have got caught in the rain. He was even born late. Delta! <laughs> Ma! Irene is what Delta's all about. Irene. Yes? Are you married? Yep. Two kids. Late again, Joey. score Boston College 13 to 3 over Tennessee in a long scoring march against the wind they used a considerable amount of time to do it there's your there's your time of possession 24 minutes to 11 minutes and most importantly the ability to run on the ground with Jim Bell using Jim Bell and, and using other players as we see 13 plays they move 79 yards against the wind to get the score can sense upset against a nationally ranked opponent, June Anderson, making the recovery on the kick by Brian Lowe that caught everyone by surprise in the third quarter. We mentioned Anderson, and we told you that he's a great athlete. He's only a sophomore. He happened to be in the right place at the right time. The Eagles of BC, they want to take away that wind advantage that Tennessee wanted to enjoy offensively. They spread everybody out. This could be a big passing situation with three wide outs for power. Instead, he hands to Bronner his fullback. And Bronner goes over the 50-yard line out of the 47. And we should mention, we noted in the first half, the Tennessee defense has played a lot today. They've been on the field. They're active. They're good. But when you sit on there long enough, certain things can happen to you. And they're right back on the field after staying uh, over five minutes on that last drive off the opening kickoff. We have yet to see the Tennessee offense with 8.38 remaining in the third period. Second down and nine after the one-yard gain by Bronner. To the top, that is Waddle, and in motion is Casparello. And off Bell. Bell straight ahead. Carries people to the 45-yard line, and then is finally brought down by Kelly Days, also in on the stop. Andre Creamer. 
it's tough to run back inside, as we mentioned before. He's running tough, but he's getting hit by a lot of people. Big play there by Creamer, the strong safety to come up. Pull into a short gain, and now Mike Power with the ball sitting on the Tennessee 45-yard line. Again, it's third and five. Boston College, 13-3 over Tennessee. 7.58 left to go in the third quarter. Tennessee has yet to touch the ball since the second half started. Power. Hands off deep to Bell. Bell to the inside. It's wide open. Down to the 20. It's around the block at the 19-yard line. A saving tackle by Kelly Days is all that prevented him from scoring. And what a great tackle by Days in the open field. He had to make it. But here's the play. They run Bell, and he jumps it and bounces it to the split inside, to the short side. Number 88 got caught inside for Tennessee, the defensive end, and he makes the play possible, but Days makes the tackle on the 20-yard line. 26 yards, now his longest gain of his career. Flips earlier by a 24-yarder at the 18-yard line. First and 10. Flutie and Moe. Hand off to Turner inside. Look to about the 17-yard line where they meet some hard yards there. They're substituting very freely. They've got uh, Turner back in at fullback. Giles is in for a, just a, a break here at tailback, giving uh, Jim Bell a chance to get his breath back. They've got Tennessee on their heels now as they send in fresh troops. But you, you sit there and you say, okay, Tennessee's defense has been out there, but so is Boston College's offense. They keep those tailbacks. The running back situation now has Bronner at fullback and Sanders at tailback. Second down and about eight. Power on the long count against the wind. Won't throw and pitches instead to Sanders. Sanders down to the 10. And driven out of bounds. And that's tough running. That's the play that's made of money today. Back into the boundary, to the tight end, away from the field. This time, it's Mike Sanders, the sophomore out of Baltimore, Maryland, carrying the football as he gets up behind the block of number 86, the tight end for BC. Pasquarello is out, and 86 into the game. Hilbert made the block for him. Ziegler on the tackle. Sanders, thus far this season, a 4.4 average, 41 carries. Third and short, BC by 10. Both ends are in tight, and we've got a stoppage of play and a flat. Shanley motioning for the offense to get back in the huddle. Yes. Penalty's going to go against Boston College. Somebody moved before. Dead ball, violation of the neutral zone offense. And that takes him back to the 15-yard line. It'll be third and six. There's the formation. Mike Power has it. And here comes the play with Waddle and Flutie. Out go the double tight ends. Actually had three tight ends in the formation that time with Caesar and Hudgens go to the sidelines. Johnny Majors brings his hands and leads for his defense to stop one more time. They've done it for him several times. Third and six looking at them here. Gasparillo in motion. And off to Bell. 15 to 10. Looks like he's got the first down. It's going to be very close. Kelly Days and Ziegler also dropped him out of bounds. Let's look at the mark. Looks like he's got it. They're working the sideline, and he's running behind his fullback, Bonner, and his tight end, Casparella, this time. And he's got the first down. And look at this from ground level. And watch this cutting ability. He's got the blocks on the corner, and they've been effective running in there all afternoon. Great camera work. We've got 6.31 on the clock, and Tennessee has yet to put their hands on the football in the third period. First and goal from the eighth. Power pitches. This is Frazier. Frazier sees his interference. Fall down. Now cuts back the other way. Touchdown, Boston College. to the left side and it's well defended by Tennessee and Frazier decided with his speed he's going to cut it back and the rest just watch it he just makes a great play out of a broken play and BC has come alive in a third period Bronner tries to lay a block on Creamer this is Frazier only a freshman out of Lynn Massachusetts 5'9 169 pounds but quick the first Very guy quick. to congratulate him was Bronner he says I'm sure glad you made it it comes low with the point after, and it is good. And Boston College takes the lead. 
Surprise, 20 to three over nationally ranked Tennessee with 624 left to go on the third quarter of play. BC by 17 and we'll be back after this from your local station. Billy D. Williams talks about changing times. <laughs> times sure are changing. A girl called me up and asked me for a date. Says she's making the dinner reservations. Says she's coming to pick me up. Well, at least I can still say to her, how about a nice, cool, smooth Colt 45? Hi. How about a nice, cool, smooth Colt 45? The power of Colt 45. It works every time. Moving on a winner, the GMC truck team. The all-new full-size 1988 Sierra by GMC Truck. And right now, it's available with the value option package. Get air conditioning, rally wheels, AM, FM, stereo, and more. A $781 savings. Plus a full-size bed liner, a $250 value. Get a specially equipped hard work in 1988 Sierra with over $1,000 in savings at Foster, Mary, Pryor, Hudson Rook, and General Truck. GMC Truck Team. Tim Frazier. Nothing going on the right, so let's cut back to the left. And what quickness and speed to get back into the end zone. He's been doing that on the kickoff returns, playing a little bit of tailback in recent weeks with the injury to Jim Bell, but that's the biggest play of his career thus far. The onside kick led to an eight-play drive. Boston College leading by 17. Eagles move at 49 yards as Brian Lowe gets set to kick off. There's the kick. A squiver. Woods at his 12 to the 15. To the 20. And he's taken down by Ivan Caesar on a headlock tackle at the 23. Ivan Caesar just ran over the blocker and ran over the ball carrier. An incredible effort as you watch 87 come into the picture here. There he is, right in the middle of the screen. Bang. Hey, you know, he's there it is again. I mean, you can't do it any better than oh, that. Oh, look at that. Everybody, all three went in reverse. This is Tennessee's first snap of the second half. It's going to be a handoff to Cobb straight ahead up over the 25-yard line. It's important now for Tennessee to stay settled. Settled and, and get the offense going. Give, and give the, uh, the freshman quarterback, Sterling Hinton, a chance to, to get a little confidence in himself. He's under a lot of pressure now. Here's the scoring drive. Eight plays, 49 yards. Frazier, the eight-yard touchdown run. The onside kick started it all off. Hint gives to his fullback this time. Up over the 30-yard line, very close to a first down. That's Wilson on the carry. No, it's Cobb, I'm sorry. The ability of the Boston College offense to keep their defense off the field a lot today has helped. And there it is. Yards rushing. What a difference. It's wow. unbelievable. 230. And, and that's why this defense is fresh. They're playing with enthusiasm. And they're ahead. And now they're playing far better than they have in recent weeks. Third and three. Hinton to throw. Hinton cuts it under. He's got the first down, it appears, at about the 35-yard line. It's going to be very close over there on the B.C. far sideline. Driving it out is Romanowski. McPherson also in on the stop. Heady play by Sterling Hinton. And this is his nat natural athletic ability, his speed. He, he does not have the receiver open. He looked quickly at number five, Woods. But then he had a sense of getting the first down and knowing where the yard markers were. He kept the drive alive. And Tennessee needs a sustained drive here. They've got to come away with points in this third period. 4.58 left in the third period. This is only the fourth play of the scrimmage from Tennessee. Flag is thrown. Hinton going long. Flag on the far sideline. That time is one-on-one. -on -one. He's looking for Miller, who's going up against McPherson, the cornerback, and he had him beat, and he just laid it out a little too far for him. Boy, can he throw. He can throw, and can number seven, Anthony Miller, run. Wow. Illegal motion in offensive backfield. Decline. Be second down. And once again, we look at this young freshman from Passaic, New Jersey, Sterling Hip. Just lets it fly. Miller's got a step on. He's got McPherson. a step. He's got about five yards on him. <laughs> Second down, ten yards to go. The 35 of Tennessee. And off Cobb. Cobb breaks tackles. Gets out to about the 44-yard line. Kevin Pearson in on the stop for Boston College. 
good job here, expecting to pass BC Lane off a little bit. Forcing any breaks. There's the, the running ability of Reggie Cobb. He just ran through the tackle of Bill Romanowski. Picked up tough yardage at third and one again. And again, we emphasize that Tennessee's got to have a drive here that's going to come away with some points for him. Cobb, 12 carries, 42 yards. Just hasn't had the ball enough. Now gets the ball again. Cobb up over the 50-yard line to the 44. Good for first down. Good, good effort on the left side of the line of scrimmage with Kevin Simons, the left tackle, and Harry Calbreth, who's an outstanding player. There's Simons turning his blocker out. Galbraith blocked him down. Galbraith, a senior, one of the best offensive linemen in America. And they opened up the hole for him, and they got another first down. That was Charles Wilson on the carry. First down category, also led by Boston College by 10. Wilson, five carries, 45 yards in D.C. territory. Hinton looking for that quick out to Miller. Big rush is on. Hinton hit by Galvin at the 46-yard line. And give it out of bounds for a loss on the play. He did well to save that as he was looking for Miller. He was looking for Miller early on this little flip screen, but he didn't do it. He had a lot of pressure on him. BC came after him, got penetration on the line of scrimmage, but he didn't throw the ball away, and that was important. He held on to it. He came up with a loss of yardage, but they still have the ball. At the 46-yard line, Galvin. Galvin was the last man recruited in his class five years ago. They said, we'll take him if three other guys don't come. And they're sure glad they took him. An interception earlier today, and one of the outstanding tacklers and linebackers at Boston College. Second and long, Hinton. Over the middle, complete to Harper. Harper's got the first down at the 34-yard line. McPherson brings him down. Excellent job by the offensive line for Tennessee. They gave Hinton a lot of time to throw the ball, and he could wait. He could wait for his receiver, Harper, to come open in the middle, and that's what he needed. And he stood in that pocket and held on. Here's the poise of the young freshman and a good delivery. Well executed. Another first down. 3.36 on the clock in the third period. Tennessee's driving. Tennessee needs to get a score with the wind at their back, and it's strengthening, it seems, out of the northwest and seems to be blowing straight down the field now. There's Harper this season, 11 catches. First and 10. Hinton over to Middlebrooks. Middlebrooks at the 10, down to the one-yard line. McPherson brought him down. That's only the third pass reception by the tight end this season. And they caught him in the coverage they wanted. They had two wide outs to the wide side of the field. They really spread the defense, and the tight end's going to come from the right corner of your screen, right in the middle, uncovered, a, a mistake in the secondary. And don't forget, Middlebrooks is a forest split receiver. That's why he's got the ability or his size to get upfield and get deep. That's actually his eighth pass reception of the year. 33 yards on the play. First and goal. Here's the pitch. It's Cobb to the corner. Touchdown, Tennessee. Reggie Cobb, his 13th touchdown of the season. It was just like the Tennessee offense was determined they were not going to be turn back this time. This is just a power. He's looking for the first opening in the line of scrimmage. The scene. He finds it. He runs right over the tackle of Romanowski. Gets in the end zone. Nice pitch. Howard throws a nice block to tie up two defensive backs. And then the great ability to spin back in. Rich with the point after. The kick is good. And with three minutes left to go in the third period, Tennessee scores quickly. They move downfield in about two and a half minutes. They still trail Boston College by ten. We'll be back right after this. Too many people think a spark plug's a spark plug. Well, all spark plugs aren't alike. These AC Copper Core plugs match my car's specs like rounds in a chamber, firing up to 30 times a second for up to 30,000 miles of high revving firepower. Precision AC Delco parts. They don't just fit, they match. Keep your car running the way it was made to run. For the full line of AC Delco parts, the M&W Auto Supply, Memphis and Union City. Hi, I'm Rudy Schiffer, president of Schiffer Associates Public Relations. My firm has blue chip clients, Pamela Kerr Forster, Folks Folly, Sally the One, the Liberty Bowl Classic, Mid-America Football, and Saddle Creek Shopping Center. They demand blue chip desktop publishing results. That's why we invested in this fantastic Rhodes Lock Advanced Computer Publishing System. It works for my clients. It can work for you. Call the desktop publishing professionals at Rhodes Lock today. Three minutes left to go on the 
third period of play, and Tennessee wastes no time scoring. They trail it 20 to 10. Here's the kick. It sends Giles into the end zone. He won't pursue it. As Bergignoni gets everything into it, and it's going to come out to the 20. Here's the scoring drive. 10 plays, 76 yards. Cobb is 13th touchdown of the year from one yard out. And you mentioned it. It was very important for Tennessee to get on the board, but they get on the board with the wind at their backs. D.C. coming out. Fans of both schools rise. The Tennessee fans on the far sideline. There you see the Tennessee mascot, Smokey. Blue kick down. Been part of Tennessee football folklore since 1953. First and 10, B.C. Here's Bell. He stumbled out of the hole, and now Tennessee's defense starting to dig in. They're digging in, and also the Tennessee crowd is in that corner of the end zone, and they are really bringing them on as we look at them. A lot of orange as we look at that crowd, and they're right behind the B.C. offense, and they're urging them on. Here's another look at Bell as he tries to get out. He never really got the exchange. A little bit delayed. Very poor execution on the part of the quarterback. Kyle as he stumbled to get the ball back to his quarterback. Organic oh, makes a stop. Brian Kimbrough also in there. Lost it two, second and 12. Power to throw. Has some time looking to the flat. It is incomplete intended for Flutie. Flutie said he picked it. The official was right there. The ball was thrown low. Good low. Tough coverage by Tennessee. Very tight on Flutie as we see. Bit. Here's the ball coming out to Flutie on the flank. And it hits the yep. ground. It Good hit the call ground. by the officials in perfect position. Wouldn't have been much of a game. Out of about the 20. It would have been third and 10 instead of third and 12. Boston College 20, Tennessee 10. Tennessee crowd at the far end zone trying to make this their home for a while. We see 50% in third down conversion. That's Cherry in motion. Hand off the bell. Bell picks his way along the line of scrimmage. Gets out over the 20 to the 22-yard line. The punting unit comes on. And how they were affected by the circumstance here. They went with the run on third and 12. They elected to go with the run. They come up short. It's fourth and eight. They're going to be kicking into the wind. Tennessee's going to get the ball back with the wind at their back. And it looks like Tennessee is going to try to put ten men right up on the line. David Rooney will face that sort of pressure. And Andre Creamer is back to receive for Tennessee. Here they come. All ten. Here's the kick by Rooney. Rooney's had one block thus far this season. This won't be. And Creamer picks it off at the 46-yard line. There's good field position for the Volunteers. And we've got a flag at the 41-yard line. 32-yard punt into the teeth of a strong wind by David Rooney as we wait to sort out what the flag is going to be all about. Here we get it. Right Got now. a dead ball. Late hit. Personal foul on the red team. Personal foul against Boston College, and that will give Tennessee even better field position to start yet another drive with a wind at their back and a minute 38 left to go. They scored in two minutes last time. So there's a stoppage of play on the field. Boston College leading Tennessee by a score of 20 to 10. We'll be back after this from your local station. It's amazing what some people go through to save a little. You can guess at a price you hope you can get. You spend a ton of time and money to spread the word. You go through the hassle of showing to unqualified buyers. And you hope, oh how you hope, you can make the sale. Now there's relief in sight. If you're selling your home and buying a new one, rely on a Realtor. A message from the Memphis Board of Realtors. Hi, I'm Kurt with Safety Lights. We're pleased to announce the opening of our second location at 4950 Getwell, just south of Shelby Drive. You can now pick up our U-Cart concrete at both convenient locations. Our concrete is pre-mixed and ready to pour. Quantities range from one-fourth to one yard at a time with the trailer provided. For information at 4950 Getwell, call 794-5453 or at 3039 Broad, call 452-7040. Safety lights, two locations, 3039 Broad and 4950 Getwell. Important statistics to take note of. Boston College has hurt themselves with penalties, six of them for 60 yards thus far in the ballgame, giving Tennessee excellent field position with that sort of wind at their back. 15 to 20 miles an hour and a minute 38 left in the period. Hinton back to throw, looking long for Harper. In the end zone, knocked away by Munn. 
excellent coverage by Vincent Munn. He was pushed at the end. He could have easily had offensive interference there. They didn't call it, but Munn, the senior, had good position on the wide receiver going up the left side as once more Sterling Henton shows the strength of his arm. Watch at the end. It's a little push there as he goes to the football. Good defensive job, but they tested him right away. 5-10 against 6-5 that time as Munn leading in interception for Boston College with three and a stretch and in the play. Second and 10. Tennessee at the 38. Play fake. Big block on. Screen pass incomplete. Over right here. It's going to be an interesting call as the referee couldn't get it out. But Nugent convinced him that he was throwing the ball to a receiver. Uh, excuse me, to a, to a tackle. In that case, it was Bruin, the offensive guard, who was coming out. And did you see Miller, quick, or rather Howard, quickly try to get out there to look like he was a receiver? Central ground and offensive team lost it down. What happened was Howard was the receiver, but he never got away when BC decided to blitz on this particular down. They put a lot of pressure on him, and when he finally threw the ball, the only receiver around was an offensive lineman. So the ball goes back to the 36-yard line. It's going to be third down and half the Massachusetts turnpike for a first. Miller wide to the top, three wide outs. Third and 36. Hampton looking for Miller. Incomplete. Hung it up there. Munn had a chance to catch up. But he threw the ball short. Consequently, both people had a choice at the ball, and there was no interference call. And Garvin comes back on as we see it again. What could have been an interesting sequence for Tennessee turned out to be a poor one, and this pass is not well thrown. As both McPherson and the receiver go for it. And Boston College will put 10 men on the line as Garvin goes to kick. He gets it away. Waddle at the 22. Runs out of room, thrown by Kimbo to the turf at the 31-yard line. Ryan Kimbro making the stop on the tackle for Tennessee and Boston College now. Conversely, with a minute and seven left, they'll only have to throw into the wind if they decide to throw it all for another minute. Well, they've got fairly decent field position. The ball's sitting in a 30-yard line, so they can do whatever they want here, but they just got to get their offense back in sync. Last time they were threatened, really, by the crowd and the noise and the, the Tennessee defense with eight, nine people up on the line of scrimmage. Several late shifts, characteristic of Boston College. Now here's power to give to Jim Bell. Bell leans into a couple of yards to the 34-yard line. Maybe about four on the play to bring up second and six. Goes out of bounds and stops the clock besides, but it was a good play, and it was a counter play. They like to run off that eye formation, and you need a tailback with some real running ability to get on the corner as we look at uh, North Carolina still ahead of... Uh, Maryland. Maryland and Notre Dame well ahead of Navy. And Miami trying to reinforce that top three ranking. Iowa also has a big lead over Indiana in an upset. We've got an upset on our hands here with Boston College leading Tennessee by 10. Here's Frazier. Frazier tries to get the corner, gets a hit late on him at the line of scrimmage at the 34-yard line. I got a feeling that was Cooper who buried him first and also Kimbrough to deliver a hit. Let's take a look at it. It's the sweep back into the sideline as Frazier at 169 pounds tries to get up in there. He's met by a whole host of white jerseys. Frazier, of course, scored his second touchdown of the game about five minutes ago. Third and five coming up. It's BC 20, Tennessee 10. Power from his own 35. Gives this time to Frazier. He's got the first down. long enough he's running behind his fullback here Turner but this is a great individual effort he breaks one tackle two tackles there he's in the clear right now and except for the cornerback coming off his block McDaniel there to make the play gave Hayworth a chance to come back but watch the effort on the part of this freshman Tim Frazier 
Frazier's been trouble all day. Four carries, 77 yards. We've got a whistle and a flag, and that's it for the third period of play. Boston College leading Tennessee, trying to stun the 13th-ranked Volunteers. One more quarter to go, so stay with us. Church in fields as diverse as superconductivity and plant pathology has helped the University of Kentucky earn a ranking as a Research One University by the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. Only 45 public universities in the nation have been granted that distinction. And when University of Kentucky researchers aren't expanding their knowledge in their laboratories, they're sharing it with students in the classrooms. Great researchers and great teachers, one and the same at the University of Kentucky. Founded in 1785, the University of Georgia is the nation's first chartered state university. In its third century, the university continues its quest for academic excellence in teaching, research, and public service. Within the minds of these young men and women lie the solutions to tomorrow's global problems. The university's honors program, one of the nation's largest, is an academic cornerstone providing educational opportunities for gifted students. With its nationally ranked biotechnology research labs, superior programs in the arts and humanities, and one of America's most comprehensive approaches in cooperative extension and public service, the University of Georgia is home to its 25,000 students and a valuable resource for six million Georgia citizens. An outstanding faculty, powerful supercomputing facilities, research excellence, and a commitment to public service. The University of Georgia begins its third century as one of America's outstanding land-grant universities. Jimmy Rayburn's here today. <laughs> Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola. We're at the Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Happy Halloween to you, and we hope you have a safe one. That's where our director views the game. All right, we've taken the crew on. Let's see what's happening here in the fourth quarter. 20 to 10, BC leading Tennessee in a surprise here in Boston. Here comes the snap of the pitch to Bell. Bell up over the 25-yard line, down to about the... 21. On down there by Hayworth and also Kim Tackle. But what a day it's been for Jim Bell. And what a day it's been for Pete Casparella, the senior tight end who's been blocking for him on the corner, number 85. Done an excellent job of giving Bell a chance to run on the corner against a very strong Tennessee defense. He's run it 32 times, 146 yards on the day. We still have 14 minutes and 28 seconds left. Second and seven for the Eagles in Tennessee territory. Here's the pitch. Bell again. Bell gets close to the 20-yard line. It's driven out of bounds there by Cooper. Also, Kelly Ziegler. Let's take a look at third quarter stats here this afternoon. Look at that total yardage in favor of Boston College and the rushing yardage. That's the difference. The ability of Boston College to put the running game to use today to keep the football, keep their defense off the field, and give their number one running back, Jim Bell, and also his uh, number one substitute, Frazier, a chance to carry the football. Third and six. DC sitting on a 10-point lead. Straight ahead, it is Sanders. Sanders inside the 20, down to about the 16. He's going to be close to a first down. Take a look at it again. Sanders is the uh, the sophomore who has played a lot of recent weeks because of the injury to Bell. He's got speed too. He's got some size at 5'11", 200 to run that ball back inside. But here's a crucial call, and BC's elected with the wind at their back to try and get three more points. So they did not get the first down. Frazier came up short by about a yard, and Brian Lowe looking for three more. This will be a 32-yard field goal. He is two for three on the day with a long one of 37. Comes the kick by Low. It is up. No good. Went to the right. Tennessee holds, and with 13-32, they'll get the ball back. It's Boston College leading Tennessee. The Volunteers will have it at their own 20. We're back after this from your local station. People in this country work hard every day. Not for fame or fortune do they strive. But the fruits of their labor are worth more than their pay. 
And it's time a few of them were recognized. You work hard for every dollar you spend. Now get five bucks back when you buy 12 quarts of any Valvoline motor oil. You work a 40-hour week for a living just to send it on down the line. When you host a talk show like I do, the hardest part is to be funny. <laughs> Or interesting, the entertainer of the year, Miss Reba McIntyre. When you've got a splitting headache. That's why I always have some goodies headache powders nearby, because goodies works fast when I need it. And believe me, there were times if I hadn't taken some goodies then, I couldn't have done Nashville now. Goodies, when you work for a living. The best of 87 is yet to come. Thanksgiving 87, Christmas 87, and your opportunity to get a surprisingly good deal on a new Nissan for 87. Murdoch's, Jim Karras, and Bluff City Nissan have final markdowns on hundreds of award-winning trucks and pathfinders. Pulsar's Maxima, Stanza's 300 ZXs, and the number one trouble-free car in 87, Sentra. Your choice, your price. Jim Karras, Covington Pike, Murdoch's, Winchester at Kirby, Bluff City, get well at I-240. The best of 87 may be the last of 87, because Memphis Nissan dealers deliver. Quarter action at Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts on this Halloween. Several are dressed for the occasion. B.C. leading here by 10. Elsewhere, Penn State leads West Virginia by a field goal. The battle for the Ivy League lead, Harvard by four. Connecticut leading Villanova. First and 10, Tennessee. Straight ahead is Reggie Cobb to the 23-yard line of Tennessee. Stopped by Galvin and Romanowski, but more importantly here in this situation, Bob, Tennessee's defense held. The field goal was no good. They're still down by only two scores, but plenty of time left. Plenty of time and working against the wind. It's going to be interesting to see what success Sterling Hinton can have against the wind. Most of it has come for him in the third period with the wind. But they've got the opportunity now. They're trailing only by 10 points. They can get right back in it with plenty of time on the clock. Tennessee 5 for 13 total passing. All completions with the wind today. Here is Hinton rolling out left. Hinton tucks it under and runs and gets close to first down yardage out to about the 26. No, he's well short. He's going to be about four yards short as he started at the 20. Dave Nugent drove him out of bounds. I tell you, he turned a, a loss into a gain only on his athletic ability as he gets outside the contain of Bill Thompson, the defensive end, number 46, and picks up a few yardage, stops the clock. It's third and four. 12.50 left to go in the ball game. Tennessee only 30% on third down conversions, looking at third and four, trailing by 10. Hinton looking, big rush on, has a man open, it's Miller. Now Vincent Moore at the 30-yard line. That's Moore, Johnson in on the tackle. Moore gets the call. That time BC came with the linebackers, both Galvin and Romanowski blitzing, puts one-on-one -on -one coverage on the corner there for the strong safety, Johnson, going against Moore. Good job by Hinton. He came through with the clutch pass. Keeps the drive going. The ball sitting on the 32-yard line. First and 10 for the Volunteers. Trailing Boston College by 10. Play action. Hinton still got it. He'll tuck it under and run. Chasing him, Thompson. And wrestles him down at the 37-yard line. Pure bootleg. Pure bootleg action as you see him fake strongly to his tailback, holds the ball at his midsection, now comes out behind the block of Bruin, the guard, and he's on the corner, and he's running all the way. Wondering where Jeff Francis is today. He is injured with an ankle, turned last week against Georgia Tech, and that man, Sterling Hinton, is starting in his place. Second down and four. This is Cobb. Big four. Territory down to the 41 yard line of Boston College. Kevin Pearson had to chase him down from behind. Look how effortlessly he moves. Now you know why he's got 12 TDs, nine rushing, and three by way of the pass as Reggie Cobb just turns it back to the split end side and just rumbles. And that's the best way to describe him. And they're moving the football the last two, two out of the last three times they've had it. They've moved the ball well on the ground. He got a good view of the pride of the Southland band. Tennessee, here's the pass out into the flats to Miller incomplete. Hinton threw a ground ball. That last game by Cobb was 22 yards, by the way. His biggest of the day so far. Quickly trying to get the ball on the flank to uh, one of the two wide receivers out there. He just did not throw it well. But and of course, we got to remember the wind is in his face. And that's not an excuse, but it's a factor. Vanderbilt leading the Rutgers by a score of 17 to 10 down in Nashville, third quarter action. 
fullback gets hit hard and powered. A rude greeting at the line of scrimmage at the 43-yard line. Driven back for a loss, Galvin and Romanowski and June Thompson delivering the hit. It almost looked like a busted play. Did he want to give the ball to the fullback? And the fullback sort of took it out as he tries to go down the line of scrimmage here. That was an option. And that's what happens sometimes when you have inexperienced quarterback and Sterling Hinton, as great an athlete as he is, he is still inexperienced. Third and 12. Boston College 20, Tennessee 10. Tennessee with the ball, Hinton to throw. Hinton out of the grass, scurries for the sideline, throws at the last second complete. Looks like he's going to be shy of the first down. Lobby makes the stop on Anthony Miller. What? Two great efforts. One by 53 Romanowski running Hinton down, and the other by Hinton to get this ball off and complete it to his receiver. And he made the first down. They moved the chains. Great judgment by Miller, knowing just how far he had to go to get it at the 30-yard line of Boston College. And also Miller's ability to come back to the ball to make the pass possible. First and two, the Boston College started. Quick throw to Miller again. They had him open, but he threw it low at the 33-yard line. There's Anthony Miller. Here's the pass. Just quickly getting it out to the flat and trying to get Anthony Miller with his speed and his ability one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback. Did, did he catch it? The close. Stop the clock, though, more importantly, with 10.43 left to go. 4 yards, 50% of the day. Looks like he's checking off the line of scrimmage. Boston College shifting people in and out. They put the blitz on. Here's Cobb. Cobb overwhelmed up to 31. And, and when it gets tough, who comes through for you? It's usually the guys that have done it throughout their career. And watch 53 Romanowski and the hit on the corner by Looks like Pearson. number 80, Kevin Pearson, the senior. The sophomore, excuse me, knifing in, but Romanowski from the inside made the play, a big play, third and ten. Ten eleven, left to go. Miller, Cleveland split wide, hitting the throw, looking long, has Middlebrooks overthrow. Cleveland came over thinking he might have a shot at it. Pearson covering on the play. But he was looking for Middlebrooks all the way. He was trying to hit Middlebrooks in the middle. Cleveland just appears from the right of the screen as a split receiver. But that's the man he's looking for, and it's just a little bit overthrown for both of them. Boy, Cleveland nearly got there. Officials timeout. There was a Boston College player injured, and that's Rico Lobby. And Lobby has been hurt in the last two games. And he's coming up the sideline now as they attend to him on the Boston College side. He's had a hamstring problem. It looks like he may have re-injured it today, but he's come back after being uh, hobbled by that injury for a few weeks. Big fourth down coming. They're going to go for it. With the wind at their face, it would have been a 47-yard field goal. The chances are small, but he would have made it. Big play of the game. Play fake. Flag thrown. Hampton tripped up. Hit by Munn and spins ahead to the 25-yard line, but on the far sideline at the 33, there is a flag. Illegal formation, Tennessee. And this will call the play back if indeed Boston College accepts it, or maybe they don't have a choice. Well, they might have been blowing the whistle as the play went off, but yet in the din of the crowd here on that big fourth down play, they did not hear it. Johnny Majors now. You called it. You called it right. It was before the snap of the ball, so they'll have to take it over. And now Johnny Majors wants to talk to his quarterback. And with good reason. If he wants to get it back, they're going to give us another shot, Johnny says. We're going to think of another play. 9.51 left to go in the football game. Boston College 20, Tennessee 10. We'll be back after this. See Chuck Norris in an eye for an eye, Sunday at 2 on WMKW-TV, Channel 30. 
Your family needs a reliable heating system, beginning with a long-life Bryant furnace. Bryant high-efficiency furnaces are up to 97% efficient, and they're built to last a lifetime. Comfort you can count on for less, for life, all from Bryant, where long life runs in the family. Condair has a $150 rebate right now on Deluxe Long Life Bryant Furnaces. Call them at 324-3864. That's Condair at 324-3864. Here come Silver Spoons, Edward, Kate, Dexter, Alfonso, and Rick. That's the happening thing. Saturdays at 5.30 on WMKW-TV. Prestige, luxury, the 1988 Lincoln Town Car at a price that'll make you glow today at your Memphis Lincoln Mercury dealers. with four wide receivers to each side, tried to hit Harper coming from the right side in the middle. He was open, the ball was thrown behind him. And so Boston College will take over. Johnny Major's got a free down. Let's look at it again. Here he is. He's got plenty of protection, plenty of time, and you'll see Harper come in from the left of the screen, and he is open. Poorly thrown pass by this, the freshman quarterback, Sterling Hinton. Boston College possession with 9.46 in the clock. At their own 35-yard line. Power with Flutie in motion. And off to Turner. Safe route, go to the fullback. Up over the 35 to about the 38-yard line. You can expect Boston College to see as much time as possible flow off that clock. They've got Bell back in the game at tailback. They substitute the fullback this time. Last time it was Turner. Second down and six coming now for the Eagles. They've got a tough roll after this. use that timeout and they want it a little bit later on they have two left here's cherry in motion bell bell slips away for people and gets to midfield bell looked like he was hit at the 40 yard line and then just cruised ahead 10. he was hit and he never stopped moving and he twisted and watched this great effort by bell as he's cutting back looking for the seam he gets hit right there by uh, Ziegler and Kelly, the outside linebacker, but he turns off of them and gets the play. Here it is. That's the ability. He's, a, he's just a reckless runner, and he's run that way all year. From Madison, Connecticut. Kelly Days makes the stop. First and 10, Boston College in Tennessee territory. Looney in motion. Pitch to Frazier. Frazier cutting his way back and can't get back to the line of scrimmage. Ziegler tracks him down. Well, he got a little bit more, about one yard maybe. Second down and nine coming up. 8.31 left to go, and Bell with his best day of the year. 35 carries, 169 yards, and that's a career high, as a matter of fact. Very impressive working against a very good defense in Tennessee. So that's uh, those credentials uh, really make you realize how important and how fine a football player and running back Jim Bell is. Out with a hamstring the last two weeks. He has 800 yards in his season thus far. Second down, nine. Here's Bell again. Bell, one out of bounds at the 43 yard line. Kelly Ziegler there to chase him out. Clock shows 7.59. It stopped with the ball on the far sideline. And a third down coming. Third down coming, and it's a third and about uh, six yards for quarterback Mike Power. And Jack Bicknell, does he want to put it up here? And if he does, it'll probably be a control type pass. He wants to just hold on to that football. He doesn't want to give it back to Tennessee. I think we'll see. Well, Bell is now out of the lineup, and Turner is back as a lone back. In motion across the formation, and there is Turner. The Flutie in motion gets to the 41. So BC elects to go very safely, and now they feel that their defense can hold as they'll be looking at Rooney punting with a wind at his back as you look at Brian Hunt, who gets up slowly. Hunt making the stop on the play. One of two nose tackles the volunteers use. He's a senior from DeSoto, Texas. And now Rooney comes on to the field. Rooney today, three kicks, 37-yard average. That's right on his season average. He's hit a long one of 40. He's kicked a couple into the wind. 
Kramer standing at the 10-yard line. Tennessee faking a 10-man rush. Let's see if they all come in. Off the mark early. Here's the kick by Rooney. Let's go, let's go, end man. over end and into the end zone. They'll come out to the 20. So a net of 21 on the kick as it comes out to the 20-yard line, and Tennessee is 80 yards away from the pay dirt with 7-10 left to go. It's Boston College 20, Tennessee 10. We'll be back after this from your local station. Corporate publishing, a step beyond desktop publishing. In the business world today, there's an explosion of publishing. Many companies are finding that desktop publishing is not adequate for their typesetting needs. To produce true typesetting quality, they need a system that will create tables, rotate text and graphics, and handle last-minute changes easily. That's why they're turning to the DocuPro system. Don't sacrifice the ultimate for the immediate. Investigate the DocuPro system. Call 332-3000. Words Lock & Associates, the publishing professionals. It's the all-new full-size 1988 Sierra by GMC Truck, and right now it's available with the Value Option Package. Get air conditioning, rally wheels, AM, FM, stereo, and more, a $781 savings, plus a full-size bed liner, a $250 value. Get a specially equipped, hard-working 1988 Sierra with over $1,000 in savings at Foster, Mary, Pryor, Hudson Rook, and General Truck. GMC Truck Team. Back at Alumni Stadium in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Steve Martin here along with Bob Cassiola for another afternoon of Great American Independent Football. Right now, Boston College trying to hold Tennessee and spring an upset of the top 20 team. Sterling Hinton rolling out. Pass is complete to Wilson at the 30, to the 40, and knocked out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Nice opening play for the Volunteers. Nice opening play because it comes off a play fake and it's nothing more than a bootleg, which he's been running this afternoon. But this time he executes it perfectly and the fullback slips out into the flat Wilson 32 behind the defensive end who had to come up and try and put pressure on Hinton. And that's what you need. This is well executed by the freshman Hinton. Good job. Tennessee's got good field position. Awesome. Uh, Tennessee uses their backs. Pass receivers a lot. Looks like Hinton is checking off. Boston College. Switching up people, they fake the blitz this time. He passes to the flat and is complete to Kennard McGuire. From Memphis, Guy Johnson brings him down. Gain on the play of about four. Just a quick pass, a quick outlet here to his uh, wide receiver, trying to get him the football and get him upfield one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback, but a good job defensively there by Dave Johnson, the strong safety one-on-one. -on -one. 32 yards passing for the freshman, Sterling Hinton. Blitz is on, pass complete to Harper. Thompson in on the stop along with Vincent Munn. They'd like to get the ball to Harper and get Harper either upfield or out of bounds to stop the clock. Good protection that time as BC decided to blitz. They came with both linebackers, but they were picked up by the offensive line. Kevin Simons, Phil Stewart at the tackles, Bruin and Galbraith at the guards. Did a nice job of giving the quarterback a chance to get the pass off. Harper comes split wide to the bottom side. Cleveland wide to the top. Sterling Hinton checking off again. Here comes the pitch. It's to Cobb. Cobb's got the first down and more. Down to the 36 of Boston College. Nice gain of 13 on the play. Galvin picks him up on the tackle. And he automatic to that. He came back with the toss back into the sideline, but to the split end side this time. And a good job here. Good blocking on the point of attack. Good job by the fullback Wilson as he seals and gives the... The, the tailback Cobb a chance to get on the corner and get the first down. First and ten at the Boston College 36. 544 left to go in the ball game. Nearly a fumbled snap. And a big hit laid on by Dan Johnson. Puts it from the strong safety position. Throws Hinton back to his own 40 to the 45. Coming into this game, the BC defensive staff knew they had a change up. They couldn't sit back. They were getting burned by people, and they decided they were going to blitz more. And here's an example of it. They bring the strong safety from the top of the screen. David Johnson, the sophomore out of West Berlin, New Jersey, and he came clean. Nobody picked up, and Hinton never had a chance. At the Boston College 45-yard line, loss of nine, second and 19. Hinton to throw again, three-man rush. Hinton, out of the pocket, still with it, and gets brought down at the 40-yard line. Kevin Pearson and Bill Romanowski chase him down. Looking deep for Alvin Harper. Harper was deep along with Anthony Miller, but they were well covered, and he never had a chance. 
and he was finally flushed out of the pocket, got on the corner, still looking upfield. Good job by the Boston College defense. Excellent job by Pearson, the defensive end, and the linebackers. It's tough when you've got to have that yardage and you're a freshman quarterback. You wonder what your regular quarterback, Jeff Francis, would do in that situation. Francis not with the Volunteers today with a sprained ankle. Here's Hinton on third and 12. Hinton looking for Miller, complete for the first down. And he gets out of bounds smartly at the 23. And what a choice and an excellent job at finding the open receiver and getting him the football with authority on it. Here is Sterling Hinton, and he finds his man right on the sideline, number seven, Anthony Miller, on the corner. Good job. Here you come Miller coming down from a twins formation. He's on the outside, the lower end of the screen, and he just breaks back to the football here. Hinton found him. Miller lined up to the top side this time. To the bottom side, it's Thomas Woods. First and 10 at the 22. 4.15 left. There's Hinton looking for more. Or Woods, rather, it's complete. And he's looks like he's got another first down at the 10-yard line. And he read the right coverage. They came with a safe, strong safety blitz on the top of the screen. It was picked up. Single coverage down here on his wide receiver, Woods. And he found Woods. Good grab by Woods. First down. Time. They're working against the clock here. Boy. Down by 10. Tennessee knocking on the door at the 10-yard line. Here's the pass into the end zone intended for Cleveland, but a flag is thrown. Looks like Johnson may have interfered. Yes, sir. Cleveland, they had man coverage. Cleveland trying to break over the middle from his slot position, one-on-one -on -one with Johnson, and he was interfered with. And you're going to see this as Hinton comes back. He's looking for him all the way. There's the interference, and he forced him to go back behind him, and he never gave him a chance to break clear. Defensive if hold in the second there before the ball was thrown. That's ten, half the distance and an automatic first down. So Tennessee will get a chance at four times around from the five. Let's take a look at it again. This is a good call. Big, and here it is. Good job here, and watch it. Right there, just before he broke to that area, he was picked, number 44, Johnson, interfered with him, and the official picked up on him. First and goal on the five-yard line. Hendler looking for the throw again into the end zone for Cleveland incomplete. Stops the clock with 3.59 left to go. He knows he's going to get man coverage down here, tight coverage, so he's looking for one receiver, and he's trying to shake number four, Terrence Cleveland, the sophomore. He's open, but he threw the ball behind him. Duran had coverage behind him, second and goal. There's a handoff, Cobb, Cobb, touchdown, Tennessee. Cobb again. Just ran the ball when everybody expected him to throw it. They ran the ball inside with the tailback, and he found a good hole, and he broke it back against the green. Good job of blocking by the center, Kirk and Bruin on the right side of the guard. Gave him a chance to go. But here, with the score now, with 3.55 on the clock, 2.20 to 16, Tennessee, with their quarterback, Sterling Hinton, are going to go for two. All right, with a two-point conversion. It would pull them within two and leave them just a field goal away. for him all day, Harper, and he finally finds him in the back of the end zone, and it's a beautiful execution. Boston College by two. As we get set for more action, the final four minutes right dead ahead of us, so stay with us. Sports Medicine, one of many programs available at Baptist Hospital's HealthPlex. Doctors, physical therapists, and other specialists work as a team to treat sports-related injuries and chronic pain. Through the use of the latest muscle therapies and non-surgical technologies, sports participants are being returned to their games faster, without pain. Baptist Hospital, a leader in world medicine.
While fall paints the great outdoors, you can paint your indoors great with Feral Calhoun paint. On sale now at Feral Calhoun's low autumn prices, and you'll get free decorator services. Remember, nobody knows more about color than Mother Nature, except Feral Calhoun. Try by Sterling Hinton and what a, to Harper. And what a call by Johnny Majors here. Going for two in this situation, and he puts the ball right in the back of the end zone for Cleveland, and they're in there. Fargagnoni with a squib kick. Wasn't an onside, but it forces BC to handle it. Frazier gets it. Pops out of the running room. Out to the 43. Like a water bug, he dashes through the wedge and gets out to the 43-yard line. It looked like going to be a tough play and maybe even a fumble. He picked it up off the turf, and Frazier just <laughs> found his way upfield. And you look at it right here. They're stumbling with it. Watch 21 come into the picture. He picks it up, and now watch the bouncing and the jouncing. And he gets outside, and now he looks like he may even turn this thing. He breaks that tackle, and he's gone. And now BC looks at himself with the ball on their own 41. We will expect Mr. Bell to get the call. He's back there and back of Bronner out of the yard. Bell with it. Bell. There he's up over the 45-yard line to the 47. And you got to say a lot for that offensive line. This is the time you really earn it. And they're coming off the football. Number 61 gets a good block there. That's Brian Shanley, the uh, offensive center, the left guard, Aiken. Left tackle Oliver and give him a chance to pick up what amounts to eight yards in the first and ten. Second and about two at the 48-yard line. Flutie wide to the bottom side. There's the clock. That's the story. Tennessee showing an even man front up front now. Flutie, or whether that is uh, Power giving off now to Bell, and Bell runs into a host of people led by Kelly Ziegler. And they tackle him for no gain and possibly a loss of a yard to the 47-yard line. And a great pursuit out of uh, Kelly, the outside linebacker this side, who made the hit. Good job by the Tennessee defense as Bell looks to break this tackle, and he does. And now he's looking to just get up there and get the first down, but they deprived him of it. They wouldn't let him get there. Great effort by Ziegler, tracking him down on the backside. Two minutes, 40 seconds left. Third and three for Boston College. Play of the game for both sides. A first down here could cement it. Eight for 16, BC in third down situation. Frazier is the setback. Cherry in motion, Frazier gets the call, and the first down. A flag on the play. You're going to get a face mask, I think, here late. They may call him on that. But what an effort by the right side of the BC line. Unintentional face mask on the white team, five yards. So add an extra five on the game by Frazier to make it ten. Look at the right side of the line. An excellent block again by Shanley, the center. And that Frazier's got so much quickness getting up over the seam. And he runs up behind his fullback here. Look at him get right up in there. And right at the end, see that left hand? DeLong, the, the linebacker, had his hand unintentionally, as they said, on the face mask. BC benefits with more yardage from that penalty. At the Tennessee 20, actually 41 yard line. 202 left to go. Boston College by two. And off to Bell. Bell squirts outside. Darren Millen says no way. And now they've got to work on their timeouts. Tennessee, they got to think about it. They've got two left. And it looks like they're going to call one here. Made an indication for a timeout. They have not indicated who it's going to be against. Now they say it's Tennessee, and they'll have one timeout for me. As Kelly Ziegler comes to the sideline, there you saw Darren Miller. We talked to him earlier in the game. He returned a punt for 96 yards. Jack McNell talking things over with Mike Power. What a big turn of events for Boston College. They were coming off of two tough weeks, and we were here three weeks ago to see him against Army, and they struggled to beat Army. They went down and lost to Rutgers in a tough game. Rutgers looked very good against them, and last week they were really taken over by West Virginia. This was their season right now, and they knew they had to get this kind of effort to be close to winning the ball game, and they've gotten a tremendous effort against a very strong Tennessee team. Well, certainly, as you saw the timeout situation on your screen, Tennessee with one remaining. 
As far as Boston College is concerned, they have the opportunities that lie ahead of them. Tennessee today, they have Notre Dame next week, and then the week following that, they have Syracuse. And even though they lie four and four, with a minute and 47 left to go, they still have an excellent opportunity at postseason. Absolutely, and they realize that, and that's what happened to them last year, if you recall. They finished very strong and ended up uh, in a big win uh, against Georgia in the Hall of Fame. Ball. They had a situation at quarterback very similar to Mike Power with Sean Howard getting booed, and then he led them to eight straight wins. Second down and nine now for BC is the pitch to Sanders. Sanders turns the corner. Sanders gets tackled by Ziegler at the 34-yard line. Shy of the first down, gain of seven. Timeout, Tennessee. And here we see Sandler, Sanders running on the corner behind his big fullback, John Bronner, number 90, and his right guard, Doug Wydell, and he picks up six yards. And now they're looking at a third down and about two. Tennessee has used their last timeout. No timeouts left for the Volunteers, and another third down situation coming. With 134, an important third down, obviously, for both teams. If Boston College makes it, they can just watch the clock run away, and they just have to take care of the ball for about two or three plays. They've had some crucial third down situations. We look over at the Tennessee bench. Defensive coaches talking. You know, Tennessee not only has... They have several people out in their secondary as well. One in particular, as you saw Andre Creamer talking on the sideline with the defensive coaches. They've made some adjustments in the secondary. Jeff France is out today, but a supreme effort by Boston College. Two yards away from a first down and an opportunity to lock up a win. Double tight end set. Moody in motion. Power naked sweep. Power tackled at the 42-yard line. Tennessee cannot stop the clock, but it will stop momentarily as they set the ball in the chain. Very unusual call. They went with the naked bootleg action, and he was going to keep it all the way. He fakes in here, and he's going to try and keep it all the way, but a great effort on the corner. Clock continues to roll with a minute 10 left to go. By Hovanek, the big defensive tackle. He made the play for Tennessee. Fourth down. Coming up for Boston College. They are taking a long time to send the punt unit on. The play clock has now been recycled to 25. The clock now has stopped with a minute and 10 left. And now we have a delay of game penalty called against Boston College. Delay of game foul. Offensive play. So BC looking at fourth down and Rooney having to punt it away. Kramer deep. This is a Tennessee team with exceptional speed. They've got exceptional speed. The big question is how how many people they put up on that line to rush him and he can bet it's going to be at least 10. Will they risk the roughing the penalty, pat, uh, kicker penalty to possibly get field position with a minute and 10 left. Ball at the Tennessee 42 yard line. Creamer back to receive. Rooney today has been in the vicinity of 37 yards with his kick. He's had a long one of 41. Tennessee is out of timeouts. Rooney comes to the sideline again, and the officials huddling over on the Boston College sideline as they talk things over here. Now they come back out and we'll set it again. So Tennessee will get one more opportunity. Punt unit comes on. Rooney back to kick. Kramer standing at his own 15-yard line as you see Rooney once more. Out of Miramar, Florida. Boston College, 4-4. Four and four. Tennessee in here at 5-1-1. One one. A lot of discussion going on on both sidelines now. Officials talking to Johnny Majors on the Tennessee sideline. Talk, they're going to talking about resetting this clock, I believe. That's what they're talking about. They're going to get on the field phone and talk about resetting the clock to the proper amount of time because the game clock stopped and then the play clock recycled. They're going to take... That's what they're doing. 
Boston College asserted that there was, should have been more time taken off the clock, and now there is, down to 57 seconds. So the discussion ranges now. They've taken down to 47 seconds, and it's still going down. And Johnny Major says, how much are you going to take off? The clock stopped at 110. The play clock was still moving. Okay. And then it recycled, and there's where we are. 44 seconds left to go. They take 26 seconds off the clock. Tennessee still pleading their case with the officials. Johnny Major still saying. I think he acknowledges there should have been some time taken off the clock, but whether he agrees whether it was that much. I don't know if he agrees on anything right now. He just wants to get his, get his hands on his football and see if he can win it. Well, 26 seconds means a, a couple of plays. Takes a couple of opportunities away from Tennessee as you see Jack McNell strolling the sidelines on the Boston College bench. It is fourth and about 11. The ball at the Tennessee 42-yard line. It's been there for an eternity as the officials continue to talk with Johnny Majors. Big gathering over there on that near sideline and Tennessee coaching staff obviously upset that 26 seconds was taken from the clock by the official. 44 seconds remaining. Jim Bell on the day. Get a load of this. 39 carries, 177 yards. Here we go. The game go. clock was stopped at a minute and 22 seconds. It should have continued to run. It ran to a minute 10. We took 26 seconds off for the violation of the 25 second clock. The clock is now correct. Let's go. All right, that's the word from Mr. Harper. Jim Harper working a split crew here. He's from the SEC and the Allegiant Independent Athletic Association signing. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. Here they come. Ready to kick. <laughs> Big rush on. Gets away a beautiful kick. It'll go into the end zone. It's a touchback. It fell one yard deep. And it'll come back out to the 20. So you got 37 seconds left. Sterling Hedden has 37 seconds to move 80 yards for a score. Big rush on, but BC had it covered. And Rooney got off a quick one. And he had the wind at his back, and he's an experienced kicker, and he's been doing that all year for him. He's been a very consistent performer. Rooney, the punter. Sterling Hinton isn't very experienced, but he's looked calm and cool. Boston College will move everybody off the line of scrimmage. Hinton to throw. Hinton scrambles. Murphy chasing. Knocks him out of bounds at the 19-yard line. Loss of one, 29 seconds showing on the clock. Murphy to chase him out. Boston College playing just prevent defense. Their safety man is sitting 35 yards downfield. They're not going to give him the long one, but all they really need is to get upfield to get position. Last time Boston College beat Tennessee was the first time they met in 1941 in the Sugar Bowl. That game, that win, 1913, stopped three undefeated seasons. Three wide receivers to the left. Hinton looking that way, puts it up for Cleveland, incomplete. 22 seconds left. He had protection, he had time, they had three receivers to one side. They had Cleveland, Miller, and Woods all to one side, all speedsters, and he's just trying to get them upfield and get the ball to him. And he threw the ball a little bit short. Tough, tough situation. As good an athlete as he is for a freshman to be in, and that's Sterling Hinton, the freshman quarterback out of Passaic, New Jersey, for the Tennessee Volunteers. Third and 11, 22 seconds left. Boston College, 20, Tennessee, 18. Same formation, three wides to the left. Hinton with time, scrambling out, he has to run it. Pearson drives him out of bounds with 15 seconds remaining. 
very hard for her. Hinton to see these three receivers who are flanked to his left side here. He's got to throw the ball. He can't eat it here, but that's your inexperience and the pressure of being put in this situation. He's got to be able to throw the football. He's got to get it off. Get it up. Make something happen. Interference. Possible uh, miraculous catch. Whatever. Another sign of inexperience. He's got trips for one to the left side. He instead yeah. scrambles to the right side. You want to be rolling at least to the side where your receivers are. He's right-handed, fourth down. Putting it all up in the air. Looking for Cleveland near. 